It is simply a beautiful afternoon for baseball. Welcome to Maimonides Park in Coney Island, Brooklyn. Today on Facebook Live is the 2023 CUNY Baseball Championship. Here comes game one as part of our doubleheader of coverage today as the top-seeded City College of New York Beavers, they take on the three-seeded Lehman Lightning. And with that, welcome to our coverage. I'm Ralph Bidnarchik. For City College, they lost in last year's championship series to Baruch. They came back with a lot of pitching, determined to get back to this point, and they are well set up to try to take home a championship for the first time since 1994. Lehman, on the other hand, they've played their very best baseball of late. They're looking for their first championship since 1995. They just took care of defending champion Baruch College in an upset on Monday pair of top three hitters in the conference that will feature. First for City College, their terrific right fielder, Jonathan Rivera. Third in the conference at hitting at 434 with power. Four homers, 31 RBI. He comes in off of a 5-for-5 five five day where he hit for the cycle in the semifinal victory over John Jay, putting a ton of weight room work in and on his craft. And he is a sophomore but a senior academically and certainly a two-time CUNY All-Star. For Lehman College, one of the top two-way players in the conference is Rancel Pineda, a senior out of Manhattan Center High School, Monroe Junior College, leading the team in hitting with a 441 batting average. He also can come out of relief. He's got six appearances, and Pinedo is a gentle giant, a guy that just takes what the teams have been giving him, and he has been taking a lot with his terrific 441 clip at the plane. First pitch is coming up, Lehman and City College. Playing two from Brooklyn on Facebook Live. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access a member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. Twenty twenty two twenty three CUNY Athletic Conference Championships are presented by Health First, health insurance for New Yorkers, the official wellness sponsor of CUNY Athletics. The Hospital for Special Surgery, number one in the U.S. for orthopedics, is proud to be the official hospital of the CUNY Athletic Conference. CUNY University Student Senate providing our students the platform to shape the City University of New York. And Hometown Ticketing, the official ticketing provider of the CUNY Athletic Conference. Simply a beautiful day with temperatures in the 80s expected for much of the afternoon. Here comes game one of this best of three CUNY championship series. Top seeded City College hosting Lehman. Ralph Benorchik joined the booth for this afternoon's game by Alliance University head coach Andre Narvaez. Let's give you the two teams lineups. For Lehman, the three seed, they were the preseason number four squad, their first CUNY championship series since 2003. A true freshman, Frederick De La Rosa, leads it off at the third base with Elias Fermin in the midst of all conference level season, the DH. Javon Smith has been a godsend as a seventh year senior in the number three spot. Rancel Pinedo at first base hitting cleanup. Nomar Riho returning all star is in right field with Jeremy Santos hitting sixth and doing the catching. True freshman Ryan Rosa is at short with Justin Nunez at second and Glenn Jaron batting number nine for the Lehman College Lightning under coach James Sisko. The likely CUNY pitcher of the year is six foot one, 
fourth-year right-hander from Boynton Beach, Florida, James Dean Johnstone. He's a sophomore, terms of eligibility, four years out of high school, transfer from Division II Palm Beach State Junior College. He just pitched on Monday in a 15-3 victory over John Jay. He's 6-3. and three. He went four innings, seven strikeouts in that appearance for the season, a 4.06 ERA, 62 innings, 63 strikeouts. 246 batting average. He is available because he only threw about 50-ish pitches on Monday, Andre. Still, Monday to Friday, three days rest. We see it at the Major League level, conference-level tournaments, and there is no next weekend for these two teams. Ralph, this is absolutely the time of year where your ace has to step up and do something like that and go on three days rest. He has to set the tone for the team. And Frederick De La Rosa deals outside and low. Pretty good command, a two-seam fastball that moves a lot. And the thought perhaps is his changeup could be utilized a little bit more because of how devastating it has been to hitters this year. Hey, changeups with a fastball. Changeups are always a tough pitch to read out of the hands, especially when you have a fastball with movement. So he's got that two-seam that's gonna run and then change up with movement. It's gonna be very deceptive today. <laughs> And that pitch misses inside, and there's about to tee up and tee you up, Andre, where James Dean Johnstone's third pitch is a knuckle curve that can be difficult to hit when spotting well. In New York, you think of the knuckle curve with Mike Mussina going back uh, almost 20 years. Yes, yes, he's actually uh, the second guy. This ball popped up on the infield. Steven Sumpron is able to put it away. The rest of the defense for City College today with Suffern at third, terrific shortstop, John Cregan with Kevin Budzinski, a freshman at second, Michael Chazanoff at first with Alex Montanilli doing the catching. The outfield is Ethan Angris, Rich Sirigliano, a true freshman, and Tyler de Blasi for the Beavers. Elias Fermin, the DH. Yeah, he's actually the second guy I think of with knuckle curve because I used to uh, throw a knuckle curve in college. Actually. Really? Oh, well, how did that how did that work for you? Uh, I was actually a reverse pitcher, so I would throw that, be able to throw it in any count. And when you have confidence in it, it's a pitch that is very tough to hit. Good fastball from John Stone. The question is, why is the knuckle curve so rare when it appears to be so effective? When, when you hear about it, guys obviously do well with it. Yeah, knuckle curve, the uh, finger placement on the ball is very unusual. So a lot of pitchers don't like to uh, grip the ball that way. They like the traditional curve ball. And a ground ball to Suffren on the backhand. And he gets Elias Fermin quickly two down for Johnstone. And is it a pitch where you have to have just like a knuckleballer because it is a knuckle curve? Very long fingernails? Yeah, so... Uh, I we got the replay here on this uh, ground ball. Yeah, so with the, uh, what I actually used to do uh, was the day after I would pitch, I would clip my nail on my pointer and then I'd let it grow until my start in order to have the length on it. So yeah, that's actually a, a great thing to notice there, Ralph. Mm -hmm. You need that length on the nail in order to have a nice good grip on it, be able to make it move more of a 12-6. Javon Smith takes a call strike. Fortunately in college, you might go six days between starts, so that little extra day for your nail to grow out, because I was about to say, those are pretty fast regrowing nails uh, <laughs> that uh, you have to rely on in order to be effective. Javon Smith is hit by the 0-1 pitch. So he is aboard. Smith, a seventh-year senior, Pleasantville High School class of 2016. A long and winding story. Started his career at Manhattanville in 2017. And he has been a pillar, describes James Sisko, in this Lehman lineup. And we'll detail his story as Rancel Pinedo will now step up. And John Stone... Catches with the knuckle curve, a called strike, nothing at one. Lehman has played much better to get here. They're three and three over their last six, including a seven-four win over defending champion Baruch on Monday. As Johnstone misses outside with the fastball, and the numbers on Pinedo 
pop off the page. Second in the conference in batting average at 441. Leads the team with 26 RBI and a home run. A 505 on base and can pitch on occasion. And a change up there. Good change up from Johnstone. And he gets ahead one and two. And that's what the changeup can do for you. It can make it seem like fastball coming right out of the hand. He keeps the same arm action. That's what really fools the hitters, is not slowing your motion down. There goes Smith. Pitch outside, and it goes to the backstop. Montanilli has to recover it. There is a lot of room here behind home plate. And easily taking second is Smith with two outs. Here at beautiful Maimonides Park. Home of the Brooklyn Cyclones, now a single A affiliate of the New York Mets. Facility opened in 2000. So Pinedo now with a runner in scoring position. And that knuckle curve misses inside. And what's the greatest challenge off a of three days rest? I think most people, Andre, think it's velocity is the obvious. Is that? Uh, get, to get your thoughts here after the 3-2. It's actually uh, control, believe it or not. And the fastball, he gets a two-hopper to short. John Cregan, high throw, and he pulled Chazanoff off the base. Runners safe at the corners. And some argument here from the City College bench. Yep. Steve Macias is coming out. Let's see if we get maybe an overturn or a second opinion from another umpire. Yeah, so he's got plenty of time to make the throw. A little high on it. He does come off the bag. I think it's just a question of whether or not he gets on the bag in time. As a coach, you got to come out. You got to be able to pick your guy up. And, you know, your first baseman makes a reaction like that. You don't want to leave him out there hanging. Just saw Steve Macias, who back in 1995 was the head coach at Lehman. Winning the, winning the CUNY championship that year. Let's have a second look. Yeah, it looks like he does not get down in time. So that's a great call by the first base umpire there. They don't have the luxury of replay. So to be able to make that call in that situation is great. Three umpires here for this CUNY championship. There's Nomar Riho. Takes a pitch inside. Very effective hitter and so versatile from Yonkers. Yonkers High School class of 2018. And a ground ball up the middle, Cregan, another opportunity, flips on to Budzinski, and the inning comes to an end. So Johnstone forced to throw a couple extra pitches, but he gets out of it. For Lehman, no runs, no hits, two left on base. City College coming up from Brooklyn. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. You better get yourself ready because I'm about to do my thing. Home first inning, City College coming up. Let's have a look at their batting order today for head coach Steve Macias. They're the top offense in the four-team CUNY Conference at 286 overall with the batting average. Ethan Angris is in left field leading it off. He has had a monster season. John Cregan hits number two. 
as the shortstop and Jonathan Rivera. The senior is the DH, could be CUNY Player of the Year when the awards are announced coming up on Monday. Michael Chazanoff, an Illinois native, is at first base. Chazanoff hits cleanup. Alex Montanilli does the catching, hitting fifth. Texas native Steven Suprin is at third base with freshman Kevin Bezinski at second. Tyler DeBlasi in right field and Rich Sirigliano is in center field. Making the start is Richard Illacosta, 6'3 sophomore right-hander out of All Hollows High School in the Bronx. This is his first season at Lehman, and he is a transfer from Sage College in Albany, where he only appeared in three games last year. As Angris takes a strike, and his keys, Andre, is a guy, first of all, that is always doing the band work like a professional, but He's got to locate the curveball, and his fastball must remain low. Otherwise, he's been hammered. He comes in with an ERA of over 17. His, his job today is to keep the ball down, like you said, get a lot of ground balls, utilize the defense behind him, especially on this beautiful turf we have. He's also been thrown well lately, uh, as you saw, you know, limiting the earned runs, and he's coming off a very strong start against Baruch through a complete game against him. And the breaking ball inside hits Angris. So the leadoff batter on here for City College. Rest of the numbers in the bigger picture for Richard Illacosta. 24 strikeouts but 42 walks in 36 innings. Yeah, so we, he's living up in the zone right now and there's a nice one down. Just missing off the plate and then we just kind of Hang that a little bit, a little too far inside, hits the batter. That's an easy one for the batter to take on a slow curveball mm -hmm. like that. And on such a nice day, game time temperatures, 84 degrees. Maybe the ball doesn't hurt as much. I know it definitely hurts when it's freezing, Andre. <laughs> I can't say I've never been hit by a pitch. <laughs> yes, it does, yes. Even, even hitting hurts uh, with the aluminum bats. Stings the hands a little bit in the cold, but in this beautiful weather we have today. You're not going to feel anything. There goes Angris. Got a great jump. And Cregan bunts it. And it's a foul ball. Well, holding his breath there was Frederick De La Rosa, the third baseman. He was about to field it. But then, like a cat, jumped out of the way. Yeah, great baseball IQ. Let it go foul, especially with the huge jump. We see a big jump there at first, and then he just decides to let it roll foul. A little help from his catcher yelling, let it go as well. It's great communication between the two of them. It's what you want to see in your catcher. Step up, be a captain, be a leader. With a check on Angris, who's stolen five of seven. John Cregan at the plate has been a mainstay for City College ever since the start of last year. Remember, these two programs did not play in 2021. There goes Angris again. Great jump. And Cregan sends a single to left center field. Angris with the ball in front of him is going to try for third. The throw by Javon Smith not in time. First and third to open up the first inning for the Beavers. This is a great, great hit and run here. Beautiful jump. If Acosta is not going to be quick to the plate, they're going to run on him all day. He's going to have to make sure he controls the run game. This is a, another running opportunity, first and third. I know you see it's automatic a lot with youth, but in the college level, you do have to uh, make sure you get good jumps. You're picking your right times to take off. And the first pitch to Jonathan Rivera is in there for a called strike. He is a senior academically out of Islip High School, class of 2019, on the island. Going to be a first-team All-Star again, sophomore athletically. And that pitch misses inside. Last year was a nice player, Andre, 355, four homers, 22. This year could be a Division III All-American, 434 batting average. 
And coming off of the 5 for 5 Monday cycle. Line drive to left field. Going back, Jaron. He'll make the catch. Ball hit right at him. Tagging and trotting it to score easily is Ethan Angris. Sacrifice fly and an RBI for Jonathan Rivera. Get City College started 1-0 in the first. It's exactly what being aggressive on the base path does. And executing that hit and run gets the runner over to third. Allows Rivera to drive him in with it now. As you can see, he sits back on this pitch really well, drives the ball. It's almost over the left fielder's head, just barely. Now Michael Chazanoff, sophomore from Northbrook, Illinois. Was a nice defender last year and hit 392. And this year at 318 with 16 RBI. There goes Cregan. Throw down by Santos, and it's sent to the center field. Stolen base for John Cregan. That's another pitch with Johnston was just, uh, oh, excuse me, Acosta was just a little too slow to the plate. And what I mean by that is when you have a runner on first base, as you can see here, and you get the leg lift, your time to the plate as a pitcher needs to be under a 1.5 at the college level. Right now, I would say he's sitting around a 1.8. So these base runners are getting big jumps off of him. And Chazanoff will put it on the ground to second. Justin Nunez will throw him out. And crossing over to third base is Cregan. And two down for Alex Montanilli. And you look at the numbers for the Lehman pitcher, Richard Illacosta, in terms of stolen bases and against. They actually came in 25, opponents 25 out of 27. What is, what is a good ratio? What is the line of demarcation? We know hitters, 300 hitter, that's where you're good. As Montanelli swings and misses a changeup, what it is, what's a good number to you? Stolen bases attempted versus caught stealing for the pitcher. You want to be around 33%, so about a third. Uh, you'll allow a third of the guys that take off on you to go and get there successfully. At the college level, I'm a big proponent of teaching pitchers they steal off of you they're really not stealing off of the catcher i know there's a lot of talk about catchers and their pop times montanelli grounds one to third de La rosa throws him out but the top of the order does damage for city college they pick up a run on one hit leaving one we head to the second inning game one of the cuny championship series is just underway Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access a member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. Beautiful scenes from Stillwell Avenue, corner of Stillwell and Surf Avenue, the original Nathan's. That's where the 4th of July hot dog eating contest takes place every year. And right here, the Brooklyn Cyclones play baseball, but a lot of college teams play their championships here. New York City High School baseball as well. Softball will also play here. And we've got simply a gorgeous day for game one of this community championship. Game two will follow. We'll call it 3 p.m. Eastern time. We'll have the broadcast, of course, right here on Facebook Live. In the future, you can watch this as well on CUNY TV via the CUNY TV channel. 
I tell you, Ralph, in between games, I'm definitely taking a walk over to Nathan's. That's yeah. uh, you can't come to Coney Island and yeah. not get one of them. Yeah, I've walked by a lot, and I see that the that at least one of the rides is active today over at Luna Park. Swing and a miss here. Jeremy Santos, a senior from the Bronx, sprint, spent the fall of his freshman year as a recruited walk-on catcher to Division I Manhattan College before transferring to Lehman, now a two-year captain in the Lightning program. Swing and a miss, and John Stone showing his fastball here. Yeah, John Stone is staying on the outer half to Santos, which is smart. Santos with some power. He can easily put one in the right center gap. And a swing and a miss. Might have been the changeup there, Andre, and he is down on strikes. First strikeout for J.D. Johnstone. As you can see, catcher set up away for everything, especially with a two-seamer and a changeup. It's going to be moving away from the lefties. That's exactly where you want to pitch him. Santos looking to pull a little too much there once he makes that adjustment. He'll be all right. Here's Ryan Rosa, true freshman at a Monsignor Scanlon. Bronx native, playing in the New York City Catholic League, and was the day one starter in the position. And Johnstone again, I think the change up there gets him even one and one. Ryan Rosa 222 as the everyday starter with 12 RBI. This is great experience for Rosa being uh, so young to get championship experience. And he goes up the middle, diving stop Buzinski, and he has no play. So an infield single for Ryan Rosa. And the first hit of the afternoon for Lehman. Nice diving play there, being able to get to it, but uh, uh, unfortunately, Wazinski is not able to make the throw. I don't think he would get Rosa anyway, even if he does make that throw. It's just perfectly placed. With one out, here's sixth year senior Justin Nunez. You know, Ralph, you say six-year senior, and you see that a lot in college nowadays, especially with COVID, where guys get that extra year. Maybe they have a red shirt, and that's how you have a six-year player, where they use the one year of the red shirt, and then the NCAA allowing them to use another year due to COVID. And Lehman has a lot of that, as we'll detail as Nunez takes a call strike. He's a transfer from Bronx Community College in the CUNY Community College system after 2019, where he was second team all region there and it's been the two-year starting second baseman and the knuckle curve misses outside as justin nunez gets ahead two and one fourth in the team in batting for the lightning at 293 with a homer and 14 driven in it's a great opportunity here for lehman to be aggressive on the bases with maybe a hit and run or a steal can expect a fastball Rosa not going, pitch inside the throw down by Montanilli, not in time. Chazanoff retreating back, and it'll be a three ball, one strike count. That's why you see the two seam fastball there, even though he misses up. Uh, with a two seam, you know, you have some movement so you can get away with throwing the fastball in that count. But a lot of times you see fastballs in 2 1 because the pitcher doesn't want to go 3 1. And this one goes to the backstop on the 3-1 pitch. Rosa will take second, but Montanelli is on it. So no harm there. But it's ball four. And the first walk issued by Johnstone. So two outs, or rather two on with one out for Glenn Jarrett. Jarrett, another sixth-year senior, a transfer from SUNY Purchase after spending two years there, 2018 and 2019. Very speedy outfielder, made two big catches against Baruch on Monday in the semifinal that Coach James Sisko felt. Those were the kind of the swing defensive plays as Lehman won 7-4, to four, where the ones you have to make, you're going to beat a very good program like Baruch. In this situation, 
Jaron's going to be tough to double up here, even with the ground ball. You can expect a ground ball. Squares the bunt, and Johnstone misses well inside. Very curious bunt there. I'm not too much of a fan of it because you already have one out. I get you put runners on second and third with two outs, but you're really only giving your leadoff guy one shot at getting a hit to get those two runs in. Jaron this time not bunting and takes ball two. And he's down at 197 on the year with five RBIs, stolen four to five. I got it. They just look to get on base and to use that speed for the top of the lineup. Squares, then bluffs, and Johnstone falls behind 3-0 with a long look in. And well, Steve Macias noticing something too. He's going to call time. And the 12th year City College head coach is going to talk to his number one pitcher here that is throwing on three days rest. Yeah, exactly like I mentioned before, it's not velocity that you lose on three days rest or on any short rest. It's more so the control. Uh, the arm's not 100%. As a pitcher all year, you've been used to going through your routine. You have your bullpen day set and scheduled, and that's what throws you off right now. It's more so the control, not really sitting into his legs and using the legs appropriately, and that's going to throw off his mechanics. Great visit with Steve Macias, who had great memories about when he coached Lehman College. He got the job around the age of 24 years old. He was going to be the assistant coach in 1994 when he got the job, but the head coach left about six weeks into his tenure to go be an assistant coach at Columbia. He was an assistant at that time, even before that, at Salesian High School, and now he's the interim athletic director in addition at Lehman and was the director of facilities. And he has brought City College back into the another championship series for the second straight year. And this one by Jaron on 3-1 is bunted foul 3-2. and two. Macias, one of the many that coached or and then came up through SUNY Cortland. So many great coaches that have come out of Cortland in every sport. Steve Owens notably of, uh, was the head coach at SUNY Cortland for a long time, now the Rutgers coach. Be a 3-2 pitch coming to Glenn Jaron. Back of the runners. I love how Lehman's being aggressive there, 3-2, even though there's only one out. Sending the runners, trying to get the extra base. Jaron's the type of hitter that's going to put the ball in play. Last year, 72 at bats, only striking out seven times. That's incredible at the college level. And that holds here as he fights off the fastball from Johnstone. Three and two with Lehman threatening. It's one nothing City College. The Lightning batting in the top of the second. Two nine-inning games here. Games one and two of the championship series. Game three, if necessary, would be tomorrow. And the pitch inside ball four. The throw by Montanilli would not have mattered. Consecutive walks to the number eight and nine batters for James Dean Johnstone and the Lightning with the bases loaded in the top of the order with one down. This is a tough spot to be in right now for Johnstone. He does have a one run lead, which is helpful. So you're just looking at trying to get the next two batters. You really don't want to go three, four and then get deeper in the hole here, especially in the second inning. At first pitch swinging, De La Rosa chops it foul to third. De La Rosa popping out to third base to open up the ball game. He's from DeWitt Clinton High School in the Bronx. Transferred in in January after attending Florida State at Jacksonville Junior College. 
wasn't the starter until midway through the season, but has been a key player of late. Expect an off-speed pitch here. Oh. And he got a fastball and popped it up. Tough play, Cregan going back then. Budzinski, infield fly rule in effect. And there is the second out. It's a great job by John Stone getting a pop up there. It's exactly what you want your pitcher to do in that situation. Either get a pop up to shallow outfield or infield or the strikeout. You see here, De La Rosa gets under that a little too much. Great job. Great execution with that pitch. And now what James Sisko calls the purest hitter on his team, Elias Fermin. And he goes after the first pitch and sends it in the air to right. It's playable. Tyler De Blasi puts it away. And a big second inning recovery for James Dean Johnstone. For Lehman, no runs, a hit, and they leave the bases loaded. Middle of the second. City College up 1-0. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, Buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Beautiful look there on what is a Friday afternoon and it feels like summertime now and the boardwalk is busy as it should be. Steven Supra stands in the third baseman and takes outside from Richard Illacosta. Supra is a sophomore from Dallas. And he's got a well-fitting nickname. The nickname is Dodge. He's got a fascinating story. As Ilacosta misses inside two and one, the nickname Dodge comes from mom, who got it from the movie Message in a Bottle. Andre, I wouldn't expect you to have watched Message in a Bottle. I have not either, but Paul Newman played the role of Dodge Blake, and mom liked the name. It sounds like a good baseball name, especially if you're from Texas. Yes. It would be even more fitting if he got hit by a pitch a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Uh, uh, let me look at the numbers there. Uh, only two hit by pitches, so he's been dodging that. Yes. It's a ground ball up the middle, and Dodge has a base hit leading off the second for the Beavers. It's a good job not trying to do too much and just taking that ball right up the middle on the outer half. You can see it here right up the middle. Just gets right through. Didn't try and do too much. You try and pull an outside pitch, you're going to roll over. He would ground out as a lefty to either second or first base. Freshman Kevin Budzinski. And he sits back on the curveball and fouls it off. And in a college baseball world of all these veterans, fifth, sixth, seventh year players, Budzinski, true freshman from Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, Northern York High School. Terrific defender and a high baseball IQ guy. That won the second base job pretty early. As he takes the 0-1 and pops it up, shallow right field, calling for it, no more Riho. Yeah, good communication there by Riho. Nunez was going back on it. You can see Nunez was going back on the uh, fly ball, but gets called off. It's a good job by them. 
Definitely need the sunglasses today also. Mm -hmm. At 244, Tyler de Blasi stands in. There goes the runner, pitch high. The throw out by Santos is also into center field. Stolen base, number two for City. As Steven Suffren is now at second base. Just his second stolen base of the year. These guys are going to run a lot on Acosta if he keeps being slow to the plate. Like I was mentioning before, every everyone's talking about pop time and showcases uh, with the uh, catchers. But what you don't see too much of are times to the plate with the pitcher. Like I said, it's when he starts his motion, so a righty, as soon as he lifts his leg, that time that it takes him to get the ball to the catcher's mitt. This is a two-hopper to short. With Suffron crossing over in front of Ryan Rosa, who will go to first base to take the conventional out. And there's two gone. And I'm sure the, the pop time for a pitcher can be improved, but it seems like it's one of those things that is more of a of a thing in your back pocket you worry about. It seems a little cosmetic to most as Rich Cerigliano steps in compared to the other things such as velocity and control that are the primary focuses. Yes, yeah, so when I go out recruiting, the number one thing I look at for a pitcher is control. Can he control all of the pitches he throws? If not, how many can he control? Uh, then the second thing I look for is actually movement. This is a hot shot up the middle and a base hit for Sirigliano, who drives in the second run for CCNY. A two out RBI single up the middle, and the Beavers with a run in each of the first two innings. Good job for Sirigliano sitting back on that. Driving it right up the middle, just hitting it right back where it came from. That's what we teach guys, especially working in practice and doing some front toss. Hit it right back to the net right back to the L screen or right back to the pitcher. I'd love to see him try and steal early to get to second base for the top of the lineup. Ethan Angris was hit by a pitch and takes a called strike. Sirigliano four of five stealing this year. And Angris, again, similar to Rivera, was a nice player last year and became a great Division Three player. There goes the runner, Sirigliano, pitched outside a ball and a throw down, not nearly in time. Better throw from Santos, but already the third stolen base in two innings for the Beavers. Yeah, so going back to what I look for, you know, the top three things are more so of control, movement, and velocity. Yeah, this is, he. they're getting great jumps off of Acosta. They're just going to run on him all day. He's got to make that adjustment. And now this ball gets away momentarily from Santos. But Sirigliano did not want to gamble. Not the worst thing in the world. He is in scoring position with two outs. He's going to be moving on contact. So a ball hit to the outfield, he should be able to score. Angris takes a called strike. Last year, after hitting... 333 in just the nine games in 2020. Last year, just a 200 batting average came on at the end of the year. Angris this year, 354, second of the team. And he rolls one over to short. Rosa charges, has it, and throws on the run. Great play. Great play charging that ground ball. Richard Ilacosta able to get out of it, but City College able to grab a run on two hits, leading one. Two innings complete in game one, and the Beavers doing damage early. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy, with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access a member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Something 
Two runs on three hits for City College. They've grabbed the lead with their ace, James Dean Johnstone, on the hill here. After pitching and throwing about 50 pitches over four innings, seven strikeouts on Monday, he's back trying to give his team another four innings or so to start this championship series. Javon Smith will lead it off, who was hit by a pitch in the first. Javon Smith contacted the Lehman coaching staff over the summer. Being now seven years out of high school, wanted to get back into baseball, was living in Syracuse and playing adult baseball there out of Pleasantville, New York, in the lower Hudson Valley. Was playing for a number of years after playing very little as a freshman at Manhattanville in 2017. And they didn't expect him to be a starter but he has shown a keen ability to make solid contact. And now second of the team in batting at 314. And this is a high chopper to third. Supra throws off target and Chazanov, he made the tag. Well, he really had to move and scamper there. Michael Chazanov who worked on his body all offseason to come back a little bit more trim and his agility showed there. Absolutely, it paid off there. Coming back, getting off the bag first and going to get the ball and then getting the tag. You see a lot of first basemen trying to stay on the bag. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. Well, Phantom tag there maybe, Ralph? Well, what do you think? Uh, no, there is no instant replay here for this CUNY championship. And as the first pitch is crushed in the air to deep left by Rancel Pinedo. And that hooks foul with home run distance, 315 feet down the left field line. And I think Chazanoff got the benefit of the doubt on the swipe tack. Uh, that, that ball was crushed right there. If anyone's riding a roller coaster, they need to start looking out mm -hmm. when this guy's at the plate. And Pinedo reaches for it and grounds it to third. Supra now backhands Chazanov, bails him out again. Well, he's been noted for his fine defense. That one caused him to move vertically, two outs. Yeah, Chazanov is making some good plays over there, picking his infielders up. Oh, uh, he really reached for that one, down. Good strong throw, but Chazanoff was able to uh, pick him up there. That's what you need your first baseman to do. Pick up bad throws and minimize those errors. No Marijo takes a call strike. And ahead of this game, for Steve Macias, head coach of City, number one, he wanted his team to make plays defensively to avoid Johnstone having to throw extra pitches on just three days rest. And what a difference that could make for City if they're able to stay clean defensively. Absolutely. And we see Johnstone settling in a little bit in this third inning. He looks a little sharper. Mechanics look better to me right now. You know, they say you gotta get to an ace early and. Uh, won't be here, it's a ground ball to second. Budzinski, a one, two, three, third after some struggles for James Dean Johnstone. Lehman goes in order in the third.
Downtown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's yeah. a little... A l- Home third inning, City College has gotten for a run in each inning against Richard Ilacosta. And they got two, three, and four up here. Two runs on three hits here for City. John Cregan, last year's CUNY Rookie of the Year and a likely all-star. Cregan spent a very fascinating summer uh, last year, both from a from a professional resume building standpoint and also just a life experience. He was a game day operations intern last year in the Cape Cod League for the Yarmouth Dennis Red Sox. Basically doing business operations and then some baseball operations. Inside and Cregan is hit by the pitch. Second hit batter by Richard Ilacosta and the leadoff batter is on here. This summer he's gonna be up in Norwich and I think that's the perfect game, Collegiate Baseball League working strictly in baseball operations. Cregan wants to work in either Major League Baseball player development or developing coaching plans for players. And he's had some experience working with analytics, that kind of next level. And he is a senior academically sophomore athletically from Ramsey, New Jersey. And saying this will be all barring a unforeseen change for his baseball career. Called strike here to Jonathan Rivera. And also noting uh, when you're a D3 guy, the way Cregan was, you're not playing, but certainly all the high level Division I guys really rubbed off of him on him in terms of him becoming a better player. As Rivera skies went to center field, long run Javon Smith. And on the back pedal makes the catch with Cregan returning to first. Good job on Smith staying with that ball, not giving up on it. Those are the ones that are hardest for an outfielder to judge. They're hit right at you. It's tough to see depth. So you kind of froze a little bit and then is able to recover and stays with it really nice. Great range shown here in center field. Huge center field at Maimonides Park. 412 to dead center. Michael Chazanoff taking low. And to finish the point on John Cregan, I thought was most notable. The thing he took away the most is how good the Division I borderline draft choice guys that, that get invited to the Cape are at the fundamentals. There goes Cregan, pitch outside, the throw down by Santos is not in time. Another stolen base, the fourth in less than three innings for City College. And Cregan did not get a great jump there, but with Acosta being so slow to the plate, he's able to get that bag off of the pitcher. Chazanoff takes inside ball three. Of course, Chazanoff's terrific defense. And with John Krieg, and he noticed all the high-end All-Americans from Division I that are going to be drafted. They do the little things perfectly. He noticed on a daily basis. 3-0 inside, gets away from the catcher, Santos. It'll be ball four plus a wild pitch. So Krieg in over to third. Runners of the corners with one down for City. Going back to the uh, D1 players, Ralph, I've coached Division I. Uh, and yes, you do see those guys, not just on the field, what sets them apart is what they do off the field. There's a saying us coaches in college like to say, everyone wants to win, but you have to want to do what it takes to win, which you don't see too many college players doing. Alex Montanilli, chance to drive in a run with an out. 
great spot. And Acosta starts him off with a called strike. And, and just how John Cregan noticed how all those All-Americans, they do the little things consistently so well. And there goes Chazanoff. They try to get him into the rundown. The throw to second. Here comes Cregan from third. The throw gets past the catcher, Santos, to the backstop. Now Chazanoff on his way to third base. And Santos took his time going to get the ball. A run scores. It's 3-0 City College. Lehman hands over a run to the Beavers. Yeah, Nunez double clutched on that. Kind of couldn't get the ball out of the glove. We can see here he just forces a throw. Nice little pickle play they put on, and he just makes a bad throw because he's rushing to the plate. And now squaring to Bunt, Montanilli gets the suicide squeeze down. Chazanoff scores, Acosta has only one play. He gets the out, it's 4-0 City College. City College has done a great job this inning manufacturing runs. Just manufacturing runs, doing the little things right, not getting a hit in this inning and still being able to score two runs. Steven Supron takes ball one. Two runs have scored without a base hit for City. The previous play was an E4 throwing error. So there was the expectation that Cregan would have been out at the plate with a good throw. And then the RBI sack bunt by Alex Montanilli. As Acosta misses high and in, ball three. One of the little things I have noticed that Acosta has not done today. This ball blooped in the air to right field. No more Riho. He's got it. We'll finish the thought when we come back. Three innings complete. City College continues to add to their lead. It's now 4 nothing Beavers. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets and they'll be right there in your account ready to be scanned when you get to your event download the hometown fan app today It's definitely nice enough to lay out. I'm not sure about going in the water, though, as they look out onto the beach here at Coney Island in Brooklyn. So far, CCNY has been able to manufacture four runs and perhaps can relax behind their ace, James Dean Johnstone. Jeremy Santos steps in. Johnstone is able to get three ground outs in the third inning, his first clean inning. Yeah, Johnstone settling in. Santos needs to work count a little bit and find a way to get on base. And 
time. He gets ahead, nothing and two. Santos hit a big home run in the ninth inning that gave Lehman cushion against Baruch in the semifinal. As the knuckle curve misses outside, that home run was the third of the season for Jeremy Santos. Lehman has hit 20 homers in 28 games coming in. Ralph, most people don't think there's momentum in baseball, but right now you can feel it. It's all on City College's side right now. This is an inning where if you're Lehman, you want to get back into the game, you got to steal a little bit of that momentum away, have a good inning. You don't have to score all four runs in one inning, just get one right now. Two and two to Jeremy Santos leading off. Six, seven, and eight. Here for Lehman. One time through the order, they have been held to one hit. And a good breaking ball that Santos is able to foul off. Thought the way James Sisko described it well. He's good, speaking of Santos, when he's within himself and has calm aggression. Yes, he's definitely a leader of this team, being a catcher, being a power hitter for them. It's a great at bat by Santos right now, showing his leadership. If I'm Coach Sisko, I want you to work John Stone's count right now. Got to get into that bullpen early. It can be a small victory in a, in a three-game series. Fouls off another pitch there. Good job working the count, making him throw more and more pitches. This is the only year Jeremy Santos has not hit 300. Started his career with a bang. Five homers hit 352 as a freshman in 2019 and he offers says the home plate umpire Santos tried to hold up but he is ruled to have gone around second strikeout for John Stone that's a tough call uh, as a coach I'd love to uh, I'd love to have the umpire utilize being in a three-man system right now and use that guy that's usually not there at third I might have a comment or two from the dugout just to keep the umpire a little honest. Ryan Rosa takes a strike. He's got the lone Lehman hit, and that was an infield hit, backhanded by the second baseman, Budzinski. Lehman's bottom of the lineup has started off very well today, which is what you need the bottom three to do. Get on base and turn it over to the top of the lineup where those guys who get the RBIs can do what they're supposed to do. Rosa lays off his professional demeanor for a young guy. Caught the eye of James Sisko. And he considered Lehman College on his own. Went to high school with one other Lehman player. That's what drew him into the program. Montanelli gets nice and low behind the plate there. It allows John Stone to keep his pitches down, which he needs to do. And Rosa down on strikes. John Stone had enough of seeing if he will maybe reach for one. He attacked him high in the zone. Yes, getting ahead early, that was huge, 0-2. And then being able to play around with him a little bit, see if he can get him to chase, and then getting him on the high fastball. Justin Nunez walked his first time up. And then the knuckle curve well high. I hope no one in the Lehman uh, dugouts watching this, but I think Mont Montanelli might be 
tipping pitches here. The catcher tipping pitches. Oh, yes. ground ball the third. We'll find out. Supra. This time the throw on target. No movement necessary for Michael Chazanoff. Second straight one, two, three inning for James Dean Johnstone. Pitching on three days rest. He has gone four scoreless in Brooklyn. Hometown ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new hometown fan. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Four nothing, bottom of the fourth inning for CCNY. Two teams met four times in the regular season. Two home, two on the road. Game one, Randy Polanco, the number one pitcher, was pretty good against Johnstone. A one nothing game through seven. Game three at Lehman, they were competitive. Before it was a lopsided victory, so Lehman comes in with some confidence today, and of course they just took two out of three because they played Baruch in the last series of the regular season and then defeated Baruch, the defending champions on Monday in the semifinal. But the most recent series between the two, City won 12-7, 8-7 on May 2nd as Acosta misses high into the backstop. And then back on April the 8th, a Saturday in the Bronx, Lehman was able to take the first game 4-2 to two behind Randy Polanco against John Stone and then an 18-2 run ruling by City. That's low ball four to Kevin Budzinski and the leadoff batter is aboard for the fourth straight inning for City. Costa's going to have a hard time right now putting a zero up for the first time by letting the leadoff guy get on. And the pitch outside for a strike. Four stolen bases and then the intentional rundown that created the run in the bottom of the third. You can factor into that equation as well for the city running game. And there is Acosta throwing over, Andre. And you've got a smirk on your face. We were waiting for that. Yeah, that was, that was the teaser we left off with in the uh, bottom of the third. The one thing I would mentioned uh, that Acosta was not doing, and that was the first throw over to first base. It goes Bazinski, pitches high, and then Santos could not get the throw off. Fifth stolen base for City. Just going back to when I go recruiting, uh, you know, when we talk about, yeah, just a huge jump. Wow. Going back to when, when I'm recruiting, something I learned from uh, a former Major League World Series winning pitcher is, you know, on the top five has to be the pitcher controlling the run game. Line shot hit to short. Rosa makes the catch. No chance to double up Buzinski as he retreats. Hard hit ball by Tyler de Blasi, but there's one away. The center fielder, number one, Rich Cerigliano. He gets great contact there. Hard hit, but just right at the shortstop, like you said. They're seeing Acosta well, you can tell. Flash play at second, and that's off the glove of Rosa. But Budzinski diving in cannot advance. That's still a good job by Lehman, keeping the runner close. Even though the ball trickles into the outfield, it's okay. Keeps the runner's feet moving back to the bag.
And the breaking ball, good one from Acosta, taking low for a strike. So Rigliano can pitch, play center field, some infield. Spent the fall at Division III Centenary in New Jersey before transferring. To follow his old high school teammate Mike Savino, who's going to catch game two, who also transferred in in the fall. So Rigliano's getting the best sequence I've seen from Acosta right here in this at bat. Perfectly placed 0 2 pitch, excuse me, 1 2 pitch. 2 2 now. Looks like the umpire got a little uh, overzealous there telling us 2 2. Ball and two strikes to James Sisko. Pitching coach Darren Gurney corrected. They reset the scoreboard. Acosta's one, two. And this one lined down the left field line well foul. That's into the Lehman bullpen. So Regliano in at 203. Drove in his 14th run of the season. A couple of home runs. But he took a ball right back through the box. An RBI single made it 2 nothing. There goes the runner, Budzinski. This one popped up right side in foul territory, making the catch is Rensel Pinedo. So the hit and run was on for City College. I'm curious if it was a hit and run or with two strikes there. He thought, you know, try and protect might have been a little too close. It's one of those where you never know as the opposing coach, did he call it? Is there something the other coach is seeing there? You always have to be cautious of that. Ethan Angris swings to the first pitch breaking ball, bloops it out over short. Rosa going back, back to the infield, diving and unable to come up with it is Jaron. A bloop single into the triangle in left center field. Ethan Angris drives in the run as Bozinski scores. It's 5-0 CCNY. Wow. Nearly a dangerous collision as Jaron nearly undercut his shortstop Rosa. Yeah, this, is, this ball hung up there forever. Uh, if I'm the Lehman coach here, Jaron's got to have this ball. That was just up there. Got got his glove on it, just couldn't hang on to it. I'm wondering if the contact, uh, you know, kind of knocked him off. Rosa knocked it out a little bit there. Angris is going to go. Two outs, definitely going to go. It's just a matter of what pitch. There goes Angra, swing and a miss. Throw by Santos is a good one. In time for the out. And for the first time today, Lehman is able to nail the runner, try to steal. CCNY was previously five for five. Angris is out of there. And the fourth inning comes to an end. For the Beavers, one run on one hit, leaving none. We head to the fifth in game one of the CUNY Baseball Championship. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Top of the fifth inning, Ralph Binorchik with Alliance University head coach Andre Narvaez for this CUNY baseball championship. James Dean Johnstone, Andre, 
four innings to match what he did on pitching on Monday in the semifinal, throwing on three days rest. And let's recap what he has done today. The one hit, yeah. three strikeouts, and two walks. He's definitely settled in here in the last two innings. Yeah, so we can see here, nice staying away there. The guy looking to pull it. Another strikeout, getting Santos to swing on that pitch down in the dirt. And then here's the up, up and up and away fastball blowing by him for the third strikeout. John Stone's doing a good job for City College going into the fifth inning here and being able to be that ace, like you said. He falls behind Glenn Jaron again, the number nine batter, 3-0. and oh. Jaron, though, ended up working out a walk. It was a pretty good battle. He fouled off three pitches and ended up walking on a 3-2 pitch in the second. And Johnstone loses him. So he issues his third walk. And the leadoff batter is aboard here for Lehman for the first time today. As a coach, it depends on your pitcher, right? So this may be a situation where you have the catcher go out and talk to him or you take a trip yourself. But if you know the pitcher, if he's got good composure like Johnstone's shown all day today, you can just give him another batter, let him go, let him fix himself. Top of the order, freshman Frederick De La Rosa takes a called strike. And Johnstone, being from Boynton Beach, Florida, was looking at schools in New York to major in film. Looked at NYU, also contacting City College, who has a notable program in film studies. Yesterday, Steve Macias just exasperated. He said, he, he told J.D. Johnstone, thank God you chose us and you gave us a chance. Yeah, and he's doing the job now, and he rewarded his coach there by not taking the trip with strike one. Has the fastball low, two and one. He wants to do screenwriting in particular via film study and attend grad school for that. So I could see pitchers deep in thought amidst their craft, also designing game plans, designing a script. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's exactly what you do as a pitcher. You have to know how to pitch through the lineup, not just one time, but as a starter. In order to be successful, you're going to have to go through the lineup three times at the college level. It's not like the pros where it's kind of like third time through the lineup, you're getting taken out. 3-1 to De La Rosa. And Johnstone has worked it full. And Johnstone's numbers from last year, right about the same, had a 4.18 ERA, 56 innings, 66 strikeouts. And those numbers nearly identical this year. And pitched well for Division Two. 3-2 pitch, swinging there and popping it up. De La Rosa catches made it's up run. The long throw to double up the runner and out at first base is Jaron. Uh, Jaron never picked the ball up or his third base coach. He was on second base. I don't know what happened. Two outs. Yeah, there. you can hear even up here, the dugout is quiet for Lehman. You got to let your teammate know to get back on that one. He had a really good jump, and it's nice being aggressive, 3-2, but you got to be able to make that adjustment and see where the pitch is and where the ball's hit. At first pitch swinging, line drive the other way, base hit for Elias Fermin. And the fifth inning will continue. Second hit for the Lightning, but it comes with two down. Fermin does a great job adjusting here. I think he, he started picking up that a lot of Johnstone's pitches are on the outer half, and he just took it the other way. Take the hit, move on to the next batter. Here goes another away pitch, looks like, with the setup of the catcher. Javon Smith takes the first pitch fastball, lines it to left center. That'll fall for a base hit. Fermin on his way to third base as the ball is bobbled. Sirigliano gets it in. Now they put the stop sign on. And coasting at the second base is Javon Smith. Two on, two out for Lehman. 
Again, Smith not trying to do too much there with the outside pitch, and he just takes what he can get, sits back on it real nice, and does, doesn't try and do too much. I wonder if that's the adjustment that Lehman has talked about in the dugout in between innings here. Now you have your best hitter able to put you on the board and make this a three-run game. Rancel Pinedo reached on an error and grounded it out to third. And he goes after the first pitch and sends it in the air to center ball. Playable for Sirigliano. After a pair of two out hits, the big play, the pop out to foul territory double play that really sidelined a threat. For Lehman, no runs, two hits, two left. Middle of the fifth, we're halfway there in Brooklyn. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Some rides having some activity over at Luna Park. I don't see people on them, obviously being a Friday afternoon on a weekday. So I think it is spring training here in Coney Island at Luna Park as they start their operations for what they hope will be a very, very busy summer as John Cregan takes outside. Cregan was at the plate when Lehman erased their first potential base runner at a caught stealing 2-6 in the fourth inning after City had stolen their first five of five. Five runs on four hits and one error for City College as Richard Ilacosta bends in the breaking ball. No runs, three hits, and one error at the top for the Lehman Lightning. Ralph Benorchik alongside Alliance University Head coach Andre Narvaez here for the CUNY Baseball Championship. Game one in a best of three series. If necessary, game three would be tomorrow afternoon. There is no NCAA bid anymore in CUNY Baseball, so this is it. As Cregan takes ball four outside on the 3-1. Let's go back to the top of the fifth inning. What happened here on this pop-up double play, Andre? Yeah, so uh, you have the stolen base. He's got a good jump. Just not being told by his first base coach, third base coach, and the dugout loud enough to get back in time. There's just not enough time for him to get back to first on that pop-up to third base. Supron makes a nice, strong throw being in foul territory. It's a longer throw than he's used to at playing third to get him out. Jonathan Rivera bounces it foul. In Rivera's cycle that he hit for on Monday, he got the triple out of the way relatively early. Singles in the first and third, and then in the bottom of the fourth, he got the triple, so home run of the fifth, finally got the double in the seventh against John Jay. As Rivera fouls it off, Cregan aborted first. He has already stolen two bases. It's a dangerous 0-2 pitch there. I'd like to see a throw over to first here to keep Cregan close. 
Regan not going. And Rivera continues to be fed a diet of breaking balls in the inner part of the plate. Great thoughts from Steve Macias out. Jonathan Rivera now, these days, never overswings, just lets things happen naturally towards becoming a nearly 450 hitter for most of the season. Big secondary lead by Cregan, and Rivera popped it up on the 0-2 pitch. Nunez out at second. That's a big out for Acosta. It's a good job utilizing both sides of the plate there after throwing two curveballs in. See Santos set up away. Changing the eyes, changing the vision. Great opportunity here for a double play. And Chazanoff will line the ball down the right field line into the corner. Cregan on his way to third, the sliding stop at right by Riho. Cregan gets the wave, and there'll be no throw. An RBI double down the line for Michael Chazanoff. And City has scored in all five innings. They lead it 6 0. Chazanoff just all over that pitch. He sees double right away. Cregan got a good jump from first base to be able to score on that. Scoring standing up there makes it look easy. Great base running by Cregan there. Especially with the two stolen bases today, you can tell he knows how to run the bases. Lehman gets some more buff action going. Certainly difficult managing here. Andre, when you're playing a doubleheader in the three-game series, you know you're playing nine innings. Alex Montanilli takes low, and you've got to figure out a way in terms of managing your pitching. Yeah, Lehman, Lehman's done a little bit offensively where if I'm the manager, I don't want to give up on this game just yet and let Acosta just go as far as he can. This game's still slightly in reach. Now, if he gives up another run or two here, then maybe you just ride him for as long as you can. Save, save the rest of the arms for the next two games. One and two to the catcher, Alex Montanilli. The guy that's been the most consistent pitcher has been Tran Hennessy. Get from a story that, Andre, you, you go years back with. Tran Hennessy is the one pitcher that could potentially pitch in both games today for Lehman. City has a couple as well that Steve Macias could consider in situations. Not an easy thing to ask. Uh, when college tournaments get started uh, over Memorial Day weekend in particular, D2s, D3s get going uh, next weekend, how it'll be so rare to see the same pitcher in relief throw game one and two. There's yeah. a reason that's a way that's very special. Yes, it's definitely tough. And like you said, I've known Tran for uh, a few years now. He plays for my summer college team that I have in the ABCCL. And every summer you see him working. And that's why he has the ability to be able to pitch in both games. He, doesn't, he does those things that we were talking about before. And he wants to do those things to get himself better. He just doesn't want to talk about it. He actually goes out there and shows it. Acosta bounced the pitch, and Montanilli takes ball four. So second walk of the inning. And here comes James Sisko, the head coach of the Lightning, played at Fordham under Hall of Fame coach Dan Gallagher there. And now in his ninth season, he's had warm-up action going on. This first head coaching job was the head coach at New Rochelle High School, or, or check that rather, at, at, played at Lehman High School. Also has been an assistant at Clarkstown South. That is alma mater at Yonkers. Full meeting at the mound here, and he is going to stay with Acosta. Growing up, James Sisko, his father had started Highlander Training Academy, and James pretty much became a, a head coach while he was in college. That's where he, his love of college baseball popped up. He was 19 years old, coaching his first team. It was a 12U team. 
two guys ended up going to Division I ball, minor leaguers, and now coaching themselves, including P.J. Zacchi, who starred out of the Bronx, played at Clemson, was a major league draft choice. As the first pitch to Steven Suprun is looped to left, in is Jaron, he makes the catch. And there's the second out. And he is so proud of that. Also, Peter Parisi is also coaching Division II baseball in the South. So imagine that when you're able to mold little leaguers and they eventually follow into your baseball loving footsteps. That's a great feeling. It's a great feeling to continue those relationships. And that's one of the main reasons why we coach college. Kevin Bozinski, first pitch swinging, pops it up. Santos. He gets called off, Santos, and he missed it! The plate is open, Chazanoff will score! Another mistake by Lehman, Santos was called off, and then the Lightning looking around, hands on hips, 7-0 City College. This ball was sky high. You see Santos calling off his teammates on it. Just not getting back far enough. As a catcher, you're coached and you're told that the ball is going to go toward the pitcher's mound, toward second base. So wherever you think it's going to land, you want to take a couple steps behind that. Tyler de Blasi takes a called strike. Acosta was about to get out of it and maybe by himself another inning or so and get consecutive outs on one pitch. And now De Blasi pops up the fastball. On the infield, this time Rosa takes it himself. Two more runs come across for City College on one hit, and they leave two. We head to the sixth inning, City College in control. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy, with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Everything looks operational out at Luna Park. Here inside Maimonides Park, City College taking advantage of every Lehman mistake, along with five stolen bases, seven runs on five hits and an error. And the E2 called uh, Jeremy Santos the second error by Lehman. And James G. Dean Johnstone is able to work, at least start the sixth inning after throwing about 50 pitches on Monday, going four innings, striking out seven, in a 15-3 victory by City College over John Jay. So they were able to pull him pretty early, get him out of there to prepare him for this start. And first pitch swinging, Nomar Riho. And then Johnstone appears like he's gotten stronger. And now what a bonus this could be for Steve Macias, Andre, if he can get another three to six outs here for Johnstone. Yeah, I've noticed uh, Lehman's strategy's changed a little bit. That's the fifth batter in a row that swung at the first pitch. Swing again, this one blooped into shallow left on the back pedal. John Cregan comfortably makes the catch. So I wonder if their strategy early on was to uh, take and work the count as we see this uh, bloop to shortstop there. 
and then now just make the adjustment and just go after it. He's throwing strikes. Why wait? Why fall behind? Just be aggressive and go get it. Jeremy Santos has struck out swinging twice. Puts it on the ground to short. Cregan. And very quickly, two away in the sixth. Uh, James Sisko of Lehman talked about our offense having quality at bats, which I think for the first three innings, you might say they were okay in that category. And then get Johnstone or whoever's pitching deep into counts and try to wear them down. And that appears that that strategy, there's been a fork in the road in that strategy. Yes, yeah, as, as a baseball team, you have to make those adjustments. Um, I did like Santos running hard down the line there. That's especially after catching five innings. That's good for him uh, to show that almost beat it out. But yeah, you know, as you see there, Santos again swinging at first pitch. It's just you have to make the adjustment if the guy's going to throw strikes. Don't wait. Don't fall behind and go right after it. Get aggressive as a hitter unless it's an obvious take. Just go get it. Ryan Rosa, one for two for the Lightning. Lehman ran themselves out of a potential big inning in the fifth with the double play pop out before Fermin and Smith each came through with hits. And the breaking ball is in there for a called strike three. Four strikeouts for James Dean Johnstone. He has gone six scoreless in game one of the CUNY Championship Series. City College still up 7 nothing. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. Calm on Stillwell Avenue and a corner of Surf just outside of Maimonides Ballpark. Inside, Lehman has not been able to slow down City College's running game today or prevent them from scoring a run. New pitcher to the game after Richard Illa Acosta is done. Here comes right hander Nick Smith that will come on. Here to try to give Lehman some length on the short end of a 7-0 score. Smith makes his 10th appearance. He's made one start. Kid from Mount Vernon, New York, has an ERA of 32 in nine innings. 15 strikeouts, but he has walked 28. 431 batting average against. And can he be the first pitcher to put up a zero? He's a 60-year senior. Spent two years at SUNY Canton. 2018 and 2019, another Division Three program. As Smith starts off the number nine batter, Sirigliano with a called strike. This one popped up out over short and over the head of Rosa. And Sirigliano is two for three. And in all six innings, CCNY has put the leadoff batter on. That's tough. 
it's tough to do to, to try and win a championship series and letting the leadoff guy get on every single inning. Sorigliano was strong enough there to hit it just over the shortstop's head. Ethan Angris takes a call strike. There he is one for two with an RBI single his last time up. Smith tosses over. Had a chance to visit with Nick Smith. If you know Mount Vernon, you know about Mount Vernon boys basketball under head coach Bob Semino. He is a legend in kind of the New York tri-state area. And what he has done for kids behind the scenes to keep them on the right path as Nick Smith, who was not a basketball player, but uh, certainly took a lot from Bob Semino and just being around athletics and kept him on the right path to get into college and to go to SUNY Canton. As this one is bounced and will go to the backstop as Smith threw a 55-footer. And that'll be a wild pitch that puts Sirigliano to second. Yeah, just holding on to that ball a little too long. I was wondering, it's, it's hard to tell with not the full distance. I was wondering if that's a, one of his sliders or not. Nice stop there of the slider from Santos. Good fastball from Nick Smith, and the slider that he can throw for strikes is his variable. And this year has been a little bit in and out with some tightness and injuries. Had a pulled pectoral muscle last year. As a reliever at the college level, you really only need to master two pitches. Get those two pitches, utilize them, be able to locate them, and, and you'll be good. Fastball slider is a good combination to have for a reliever. And the 3-2 fastball bounced to second. Nunez. He'll take the out and over to third base with one down is Sirigliano. It's a good job of situational hitting there, getting the runner over to third base and being able to yet again score in the sixth inning. And that would be all six innings. John Cregan, chance to drive it a run. Lehman brings the infield in all the way around. And this is a breaking ball high and into Cregan. So yeah, so we see the change here. I was just going to comment on that. Smith goes to the stretch. When you have the infield in, you don't want to pitch from the windup. And this one bounces and skips past Santos and in to score Sirigliano. 9 nothing City College. Becomes in irrelevant in that situation, but just to finish my thought, you don't want your pitcher throwing from the windup with the infield in because you allow that runner at third base to get a better jump on a ground ball. Yeah, make that 8 nothing on the wild pitch. Time is called. Nick Smith is going to get a, a visit. There's been warm warm-up action in the Lehman bullpen. So the Beavers have now scored in all six plate appearances as a team. And James Sisko right now, as we see warm-up action there, he's got to try to find a manage the rest of this game and perhaps best scenario not use another pitcher and save them for game two and then an if necessary game three. So Smith with a long leash here just to work his way through. Yes, I actually would have considered bringing Acosta back out. I know he has not been as effective as you want him to be, but that does allow you to save your bullpen for the next two games. You still have to look to manage and try and win this championship even if you're down in the first game. Smith comes back with a fastball strike. Two and one, eight runs on six hits and an error for City College. And remarkably, Andre, old baseball cliche, being proven true 
in this game is there's a line shot caught by Nunez off the bat of Cregan. He throws on anyway just to make sure. So that'll be a fourth. That'll be just a line drive. Jonathan Rivera stands in. All six leadoff batters that reached today for City College have all scored. That's something you cannot allow. I know it's an obvious statement, but it's something you have to remind your pitcher about and keep them focused constantly. In a big game like this, every pitch matters. And Smith comes back with a strike. Rivera has been kept quiet. Sacrifice fly and an RBI to left field his first time up. Before putting the ball up in the air in his last two plate appearances. So the reason we say as coaches every pitch matters in the playoffs in the postseason is because there's no more tomorrow. Whereas you're, if you're coaching in the middle of the season. Rivera pops up the 3-1. Rosa takes over. And it comes to an end. We'll finish the thought in the seventh inning. For City College, another run on one hit. And they leave none into the seventh. CCNY up 8-0. ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new hometown fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the hometown fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Well, today it's been a smooth ride for City College. And for Lehman, things have come crashing down. Pardon the pun. Here from Brooklyn. No runs, three hits, two errors for the Lightning. Eight, six, and one. Here for City College, James Dean Johnstone pitching on three days rest will try to make it through seven. He went eight innings at Baruch on April 22nd in a notable performance in a 2-1 game. He's done a great job since the second inning, settling in, being the ace. And oh. Lehman has swung first pitch pretty often since that point. Yes. Even though he's allowed three base runners in the last four innings, that double play was huge in that fifth inning to get out of it. Justin Nunez then takes a called strike two. Uh, talking to Steve Macias of CCNY, he has felt this year and is more than ever now in his 12th season coaching City College, they've never had pitching depth like this. Swing and a miss, and Johnstone is able to fan Nunez for his fifth strikeout. One out in the seventh. Most years he's felt we've got about 10 guys that you can pitch this year as many as 15 to 16 what he called solid Division Three arms and about five really good D3 starting pitchers that can give you some depth. 
last year as he thought that if Baruch College had lost game two, if City College was forced to play a game three last year, they were going to have to do a full staff day and probably throw six pitchers to get through game three of a championship series. They just didn't have the pitching. Recruiting, of course, was non-existent uh, on campus through the CUNY system throughout the pandemic months or the 2021 calendar year 2020. So their roster was short to begin with. As Johnstone falls behind Glenn Jarin, two and one. Yeah, it's, it's great to have the depth on the mound like they do. And they're able to utilize that for the next two games because Johnstone's just giving them innings right now. It's it's a cliche, but it's true. Pitching wins championships. And this is the time of year when you need your arms to show up for you. And Jaron fouls one off and above us, above the press box here. That is hard to do <laughs> here uh, at Maimonides Park. Did you bring your glove today, Ralph? No, 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 no. I mean, better to bring the, the, the suntan lotion today. Yes. Oh, yeah. And the 3 2 breaking ball inside ball four. And the number nine batter, Glenn Jaron, has walked three times today. It's exactly what you need your nine hitter to do get on base, any means necessary. Get hit by a pitch, walk, put the ball in play, and force an error, or get a hit, of course. Any means necessary. Set the table for the top of the lineup. Jaron's been a great number nine hitter today. I'd love to have him on my roster doing that. Frederick De La Rosa takes inside. He's considered the catalyst by James Sisko and the Lehman dugout. When he goes, the rest of the team follows. And unusual to hear about a freshman, a true freshman at that. This one blooped out into right center. And the right fielder, De Blasi, has it for the second out. And De La Rosa is now 0 for 4. Here is Elias Fermin. You know, talking about De La Rosa being a freshman, it's, it's great for Lehman because he's getting that experience in the championship game being a leadoff guy. It's good for their future. Mean is tied up and fouls it back. Lehman is here in their first CUNY championship series since 2003. Program has some pretty good history, however, but for these players, it's new playing in this best of three. Yeah, it's definitely different than just playing a double header or single nine in the regular season. And a ground ball over the mound. Buzinski, tough play, is able to just knock it down. Infield single for Elias Fermin, two on with two out in the seventh. Again, another outside pitch, and Fermin stays back on it. Doesn't try and do too much, just like the uh, single he got in the fifth inning to right field. He's done a good job of hitting today. Javon Smith taking low. He ripped a double to left center field and has been hit by a pitch. Lehman trying to erase that zero and perhaps trying to build some momentum that they can take with them into game two. Or at least get John Stone out of the game. And by that, Andre, getting Johnstone out of the game makes CCNY maybe burn a, a pitcher that perhaps Steve Macias would like to stay away from. And the strategy behind that, Lehman might lose this game, but you can still impact game two. Absolutely, and you have the ability to lose the battle but win the war by doing that. You're gonna lose game one, you, do, you want to have City College use as many arms as they have to. 
you, you need to make this a three-game series if you're Lehman right now. Smith continues to foul pitches off. And if Johnstone gets out of this inning with another pitch or so, you would think City College and Steve Macias might consider just bringing him out for the eighth inning just to start it. You know you can't use him again for game two and maybe an unlikely for tomorrow. So this will be it. And possibly for his career as Smith pops it up. Playable, Michael Chazanoff in front of his dugout. And James Dean Johnstone pitching on three days rest has got seven scoreless inning in game one of the CUNY championship. Striking out five, walking four. If this is all for his career, the likely CUNY pitch of the year certainly gave his team a championship effort. Eight nothing, it's stretch time in Brooklyn. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access the member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. You better get yourself ready, because I'm about to do my thing. Oh, hey, hey. I'm sitting by the van, now I'm dancing on the half life. Oh, hey, hey. I'm turning on the dime, now I'm flipping on the outside. Upside, upside. I'm turning on the dime, now I'm flipping on the upside. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Well, it's past lunchtime here in Brooklyn. 8 nothing to score. We are going to have Subway, though, between games. We're expecting game two to start about 35 minutes right after. Tentatively started. Scheduled to start for 3 p.m. Eastern. And we'll have the broadcast for you here again on Facebook Live. You can watch it after the fact in the next week or so. Also via CUNY TV on your local cable access. Nick Smith starts his second inning of work for Lehman as he's tr just trying to close this out as he faces Michael Chazanoff. And Chazanoff pulls this on the ground to second for Justin Nunez. And there is one away. That's the first leadoff guy retired. Yep. Alex Montanilli will bat. And now the question is, can Lehman put up a zero? And Smith has come back out and throwing strikes after some struggles in the sixth inning. Smith looks great right now. He's just dealing. He's in the zone. I wonder if maybe he didn't warm up enough in the bullpen. And now he's loose, ready to go. A little overthrow, tried to overthrow that one a little bit. Get a little more velo behind that pitch. He stays ahead on Alex Montanilli, a catcher out of Ardsley, New York, in Westchester County. He's a senior academically from White Plains. He also came back just like Chazanoff in great shape, really improved, particularly improving his pop time that improve things. In addition to the pitching staff depth, that is a lot better. Steve Macias uh, reflecting on the season, but his catching has also greatly improved. And I'm sure that goes hand in hand. 2 2 is high as Montanelli has come back as a different player. Last year, Alex only played nine games. You could probably call him the number three catcher a year ago. And then bringing in Mike Savino, a freshman, 
that will start game two. So they've radically improved that position. 3-2 high, and Smith loses Montanilli. So after getting ahead, he walks his first batter, and the fifth walk issued by Lehman pitching. I don't know, I might have uh, put the jinx on yeah. uh, Smith there a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Andre, you're finding out firsthand there, there is such a thing as a broadcaster's jinx. When you notice it, it comes with parentheses and an asterisk. Yes. <laughs> Steven Supron takes outside. Beaver's offense has done a great job today getting those eight runs only off of six hits and manufacturing them. I know there was that one inning where they scored the two runs in the third without getting a hit. Five walks, five stolen bases, and also two errors by Lehman have helped out a lot. Called strike to Supra. Yeah, Lehman's given up nine free bases, and if uh, you're familiar with college baseball, that's that's what something we keep track of. Take it low, two and two. Free, free bases consisting of errors, walks, hit batters, and even counting those errors that are in the field where a guy gets an extra base. And then one of the other ones are overthrows. Swing and a miss, Supron down on strikes. And Smith has his first punch out, two gone. So if you have a single hit to the outfield, as we see uh, the strikeout here, good job. Good job by Smith settling in after the walk. He's living off of his fastball right now. Um, going back to the overthrows from the outfield, if you have a runner on second and they get the single to the outfield and then the outfielder decides to overthrow the cutoff man, uh, throwing home, that batter gets second base. You count those as a free base. And this ball off the glove of Santos. Maybe a little bluff there by Montanelli. See how that's going to be scored. That will be a pass ball on the catcher, Santos. Yeah, Santos taking his eye off of the ball, looking at Montanelli over there at first base on that. Very nice changeup thrown for the first time by Smith. And Budzinski well out ahead. Beavers trying to score and make it a, at least a run in all seven frames today. No warm up action really in the Lehman bullpen. Warm-up action taking place in the city bullpen. This is a ground ball up the middle and through a base hit for Bazinski. Rounding third and coming in Montanelli and he'll score around the throw. Santos could not apply the tag. Indeed, the Beavers have scored in all seven innings. They add another run. It's 9 nothing. A two-out RBI single for freshman Kevin Bazinski. It's just a good job staying with the pitch, hitting it up the middle, getting the ball to the outfield, especially with two outs, getting the runner to score easily. This one on the ground to short by de Blasi, and he'll go to second to get the force out to put a cap on the seventh. A run on one hit into the eighth inning. City College putting on the finishing touches of game one. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today.
start of the eighth inning, 9-0 City College. Their offense collectively has been wonderful, including the running game. And then there's the likely CUNY pitch of the year. It'll be announced on Monday. But James Dean Johnstone, if there was any doubt about it, he has certainly added to his resume for the season. He is going to start the eighth inning here, pitching on three days rest. He's given up four hits. He's worked around some trouble today. The Beavers have to be thrilled with his outing today, taking him through seven and now starting the eighth inning. And most importantly, not giving up a run. And while it is a, a deeper City College pitching staff, this is also, I think, Andre, a senior that's that's Perez asking, and Steve Macias maybe managing with emotion here, also realizing this is a guy that wants to leave everything out here. He would be unlikely to pitch tomorrow if there was a game three if necessary. Yeah, he definitely should not be pitching tomorrow. <laughs> I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Uh, but yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with what you were saying about the emotion aspect of it as a coach. This is going to be his last outing of his career, his college career, and and. This is the memory he'll have for the rest of his life pitching this game in the championship. And a ground ball left side, sliding stop by Supran. And Lehman gets the leadoff batter on here in the eighth. Hard ground ball hit by Rancel Pinedo, who's got his first hit of the day. Just perfectly placed ball there. Supran can't, he can get to it well, but just can't do anything other than that. It's one of those baseball terms where the baseball had eyes on it. It was put in the right spot. No more Riho takes a called strike. Season high thrown this year by James Dean Johnstone was that eight inning one run game, six strikeouts at Baruch a few weeks ago, April 22nd. That was a pitcher's duel though, 2-1. Likely higher stress innings. Here, pitching at 9 nothing, Andre, I would imagine either mentally and perhaps that translates over to physically, less in terms of high leverage and stress. Yeah, you can just start executing a different plan of throwing more fastballs, letting the hitters get themselves out. Coach is going to have to walk a fine line between having a good memory versus a bad memory. You don't want to allow him to be out there long enough where it can kind of turn into somewhat of a bad outing, you know, considering the situation. Three and one to no more Riho. By no means am I saying he's having a bad outing if he doesn't get out of this inning, but you definitely want the kid to have, have that shutout. As he goes right after Riho and works at full three and two. And we're only having this conversation because of the great job that City College has done in terms of scoring in every inning and the great job he's done in terms of putting up donuts and zeros in every inning. And the 3-2 misses outside ball four. So the thick walk issued by Johnstone for a budding movie screenwriter. He knows he wants to write this story with a happy ending. But now Absolutely. two on here for Jeremy Santos. Absolutely. I might take a trip here, settle him down as a coach, go out there and just tell him, listen, you've done a great job. Empty the tank here. Just go one batter at a time. Let it all hang out and enjoy this. Santos takes outside. Lehman went through a stretch in the middle innings where they swung at the first pitch pretty consistently. And Santos chops one to short. Cregan goes to second one, Bozinski the first. Not in time. Tough play to get, get a double play. Oh, and they call the interference on Nomar Riho at second, and it's ruled an automatic double play. 
Out comes James Sisko to argue here with the base umpire here right in the middle of the infield. There's two outs and they're gonna send Pinedo back to second base. So Santos grounding out here. I'd love to see the play there. Oh, that is tough. That is a tough call. So the only reason that that call is made there is because the runner does not slide at second base. But in that situation, he really did not get in the way of the throw at all. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you what, Coach Cisco handled that a lot better than I might have even in a situation like this where it's a 9 nothing game. Andre, what's the discretion there for the umpire? Because Riho is so far away from the bag, he's already given up. Does Riho just need to take a right-hand turn when it's obvious, start trotting out to right field? Yeah, just take a couple steps toward right. Should be enough for the umpire to understand that he's given himself up. Even though I don't really see anything there that says anything that he's trying to break up the double play there. He kind of took the last step at half speed, understanding he was already out. Um, but I guess the fact that he went past the bag is the call there. Ryan Rosa takes strike one from Johnstone. So we take another look at it. He's already out, he's slowing up, and he just goes past the bag toward left field instead of going toward right field. It's the only reason I could think of the umpire making that call. But like I was saying, if I'm the Lehman coach, I'm getting upset there because we have more games to play and we want to take momentum into the second game. Yes, this is a 9 nothing game and you're not really getting upset at the situation right now where it, if it was a one nothing game there, you're getting more upset at the situation where your guys can put some runs on the board. Your guys can score and take that momentum into game two. And it might get Johnstone off the hook. He might have been in some real trouble in terms of being pulled from the game and Steve Messi is hoping he can get Ryan Rosa here with a 3-2 pitch coming and two down. Warm up action continues for the Beavers. And so it was also the follow through where Riho continued running after he passed second base that influenced the umpire's decision yeah I, I believe so I, you know like I said he's he's going more toward left field as opposed to taking that right turn toward right center and kind of just giving himself up and a 3-2 ground ball to third a big hop for Supron and he lobs it over the first and James Dean Johnstone has worked eight scoreless innings clearly the CUNY pitcher of the year eight scoreless giving up just five hits if this is all for this terrific senior, what a way to close out your career. 9-0, CCNY, into the eighth. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy, with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. James Dean Johnstone, hugs and congratulations all around. Going eight scoreless innings in game one of his CUNY championship series. And for a senior that does have multiple years of eligibility left as we look at his final totals, five strikeouts, five walks. And he worked his way in and out of trouble when he needed to, Andre. Uh, but overall, 
he looked pretty composed throughout over that time. As we see Terrence Mack in for Lehman, here to throw at the bottom of the eighth inning. Numbers on Mack, seventh appearance, 17.05 ERA. He's thrown just six and a third innings this year, seven strikeouts, 13 walks, and opponents hitting 419. So he will get an inning of work in, and Lehman can preserve some of their other key arms and get them ready for game two to try to force a game three tomorrow in this championship series. Terrence Mack is a junior out of Yonkers, and he attended Palisade Prep. He's a fourth year junior. And first pitch swing, Rich Srigliano lines in the air to left. Going back is Jaron. He watches it go high off the wall. Ball quickly thrown in, and Srigliano did not miss a home run by much. About three quarters up off the wall, off the Coca Cola advertisement. Yeah, that, that was well hit. Very well hit. Sitting on that first pitch and just attacking it. Yeah, spot miss there and a little bit of a bat flip, but uh, doesn't get out there. This one on the ground to second, and Sirigliano is going to be out. That's a double play ball. That was a 4 3. Let's see what the call is. Well, they have to throw now to second to get the force out. This has to be a double play. Sirigliano thought it was going to be a line drive. He went back to first. Nunez threw, threw two first to get Ethan Angris 4 3. There's no doubt about that. I think. And they're saying Sirigliano made it back to first safely? I, I believe, and uh, we'll see here, I believe he steps on first base first and then tags the runner. He's off the back. He should be out. He did step on first base first, but he came off the back. So it nullifies the force because the first baseman steps on the bag first. Uh, if they had thrown to second, then it is a force play. But because the first baseman steps on the bag first, the force is nullified. So Sirigliano is given first base. He's off the bag. There was a tag applied first, Andre, on Angris, who is coming down the line as the batter. Now Steve Macias is out. The CCNY coach, his team is getting the benefit here. So they and, well, now okay. they're saying Sirigliano is out. So yeah. That's why he came out. And it is a double play. So it goes in an unusual 4-3 yes. double play. Yes. So it looks like the plate umpire helped out the first base umpire on that call. And they did get the call right, calling that double play. So it's a 4-3 and then a 3 unassisted to get the second out. And John Cregan takes it. And a big swing at the first pitch fastball from Mack. It's never a dull moment in college baseball, no. huh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We have uh, the longest single you could probably uh, see off the wall and then a uh, double play like that. Strike two to John Cregan. Going back to that long single, uh, yeah, I did want to point out Jaron played that phenomenally, getting it off the ball, off the wall and getting the ball in quickly. And home runs here in Brooklyn are very tough to come by, even for the pros. Short season Brooklyn Cyclones, they would have maybe you know, less than 10 home runs a season in home games. Short season ball, you're playing about 35 home games a year here. And whenever the college guys play here, I go back to the 2007 Big East Tournament, Todd Frazier was able to hit a home run here to right center basically right under where the scoreboard is. That's the longest I've ever seen a collegian hit a home run. Um, I've had coaches tell me this ballpark basically 
It plays small down the left field line and then to the right of the left field foul pole about 10 yards. And then the rest of the ballpark plays huge. Yeah, it's hard to hit one out. Even though you have 315 down the line, you have the wall that's higher up. So in reality, you probably have to hit the ball about 335 to get it out. Yeah. And then center field, forget it at 412. There was only one, and that's the right field line, 325. Yes. Line drive center field and a base hit for John Cregan. And Cregan is aboard. He is two for three. As Jonathan Rivera will come up. And then in right field, what you have to deal with is the wind, especially at night games when yeah. the weather isn't as nice today. Even a good lefty power hitter that's going to pull the ball. It's 325 with a little bit of wind can knock it down 10, 15 feet. And that's what makes this ballpark very much a pitcher's park, yes. particularly for the collegians. Yes, absolutely. Oh, they, they still help the lefty hitters out as usual. Of course, I'm a little biased mm -hmm. as a righty with uh, not having the higher up wall mm -hmm. that they do have in left. Jonathan Rivero works out the walk and he's on base for the first Number time six, today. So check that a hit by pitch rather for Rivera. Let's see. Yeah, it's a little slight. Yep, as he pointed, yep, pointed it out there. Making sure the umpire didn't miss that one, huh? Mm -hmm. When you're wearing the elbow yep. guard, it's uh, a little easy to do that as a hitter. Yeah, you've got the pillow on. It's <laughs> jazz it off. I like that take, one. I'm going to have to use that. Yeah, take strike one. <laughs> Beavers, again, the theme has continued. They have scored in every inning. Two down here. And Chazanoff is clearly hit by Mack. And Mack arguing, no, no, they're going to say Chazanoff leaned into it this time. Chazanoff pointing to his elbow, trying to buy the call. But the home plate umpire is going to send him back. And now Steve Macias very, yeah. uh, pleading his case. It's a very uh, interesting call. We see here if he leans into it or not. I don't really see a lean. He just stays there. The batter does have the right to stay there. I know there's a lot of misconception with what a hitter has to do. He does not have to move out of the way. He just can't lean into the pitch or stick his arm into the pitch. And then you have the rare batter that'll stick his elbow out especially on a breaking ball that is actually can be called a strike yeah I've seen that in a game recently the Mets won a game against the Marlins I recall Michael Conforto basically did that yeah that's a very rare thing to see Nine runs on nine hits and an error today for City College. I think he wants to hit the ball anyway, especially having that double today. Six of the nine starters today for City College with hits. They pounded John Jay on Monday, 15-3 score. They had a season high 14 RBI. As a pitcher here, you get in a lot of foul balls. What, what you want to do, especially since you're ahead in the count right now, is you want to start to slowly expand the zone and make the batter chase after your pitch. You have the luxury of throwing a pitch out of the zone right now. Inside and Chazanoff is definitely hit there. No dispute back to back hit batters by Terrence Mack. So the bases are loaded for City College with two down and Alex Montanilli will come up. Alex 
He's walked twice, laid down a perfect suicide squeeze in the third inning for an RBI that had made it a 4 0 lead for City College. So otherwise, he is 0 for 1. Lehman scheduled to throw their number one pitcher, Tran Hennessy, in game number two. And they also have Christopher Delgado, who started nine of 14 games. One of those two will appear. It, it might be Hennessy to start, Delgado to pitch second. While CCNY coach Steve Macias knows that he's going to throw Brandon Pater, rubber armed guy that can throw multiple innings in relief, but he's been their number two. This is a wild pitch going back to the screen, and another run will score. 10 0 City College. Indeed, they have scored in all eight plate appearances. Cregan will race into score, and the other two runners will advance. This goes to show you don't need to have a power hitting offense. You just put one or two up every inning, and you slowly start to inch your way into a big lead. Mack, the third pitcher on here for Lehman. And Montanilli pops it up. Playable in right field for Nomar Riho. And the inning comes to an end. The early double play seemed to help. But the Beavers able to pick up a run on two hits, leaving two. We head to the top of the ninth. The Beavers looking for the closeout of game one. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. You better get yourself ready, because I'm about to do my thing. Oh, hey, hey. I'll see the bump of fun, now I'm dancing on the high five. Oh, hey, hey. I'm turning on the dime, now I'm flipping on the other side. Up, 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 up. As we push towards the middle of the afternoon, boardwalk still busy here in Coney Island. CCNY will go in that direction out of the right field bullpen by bringing on their second pitcher of the day. Here's 6'4 sophomore right hander Jack Daly, who replaces James Dean Johnstone after eight innings. He's from Bayonne, New Jersey, St. Peter's Prep. Struggled with consistency and control last year, a little bit better this year. ERA is near 16. He's 1 0, his 12th appearance. 13 innings, 18 strikeouts, 13 walks. He's also hit seven batters, but uh, Daly lost a lot of weight, got trimmer off of last year, put on some muscle. He's got a lot of movement with a fastball, curveball, and changeup. So he is on to try to close this out smoothly and then take us to game two. It's a good job by the coach getting a young guy some uh, championship experience for the future. Could take advantage of a 10 run lead here, do something like that. Lehman threatened for a big inning in the eighth before a 6 4 3 double play on a disputed call ended up diffusing that. And now they just try to spoil the shutout.
And Daly shows a very nice fastball for a called strike. Justin Nunez chases after the second pitch fastball. Nothing in two. City College does not have a shutout as a team this year. The one seed came in having won three straight. They're 14 and 18 overall, but nine and three in the CUNY. Lehman went five and seven in CUNY play to get the three, seven and 21 overall. And Nunez takes a fastball to left center. That's going quickly towards the wall. Long run for Sirigliano. Nunez on his way to second. And Sirigliano is able to get to it and hold him into a leadoff double. The left number three, Glenn Jare. Nunez must like those pitches down because he just put a surge into that one into left center. As you can see, all the way to the wall. It's a great way to start the ninth inning to try and break that shutout, like you said. Again, you're looking for some momentum going into game two here. Glenn Jaron. He walked three times against Johnstone. Crown ball hit the third. Supron will look back the runner and gets Jaron. He is retired for the first time today. Supron has put on a clinic on how to play third base today. Ranging to his left, the double play foul wall that he caught in the air, just doing a great job. Frederick De La Rosa. De La Rosa with an 0 for 4. And he's put the ball up in the air all four times. And that's certainly, I think, the, the first area James Cisco is going to point out after the game. And he is hit by the pitch. So he takes one right in the back. And two on for Elias Fermin. The so Daly has shown some good, but then a little wild. That's his eighth hit batter in 13 plus innings. Effectively wild is yes. the path that Jack Daly, as Steve Macias described, that's the path that he has been on and working towards. And Fermin sends this ball into left field, a base hit. Nunez makes the turn, but the throw is a good one by Angris, so they'll hold the runner up at third base. And for the first time, Lehman has the bases loaded. Third hit of the game for Elias Fermin. His ninth multi-hit game of the year and third three-hit game. So Fermin hitting the ball the other way in his first two hits and now pulling the ball, showing that he is able to be a wide range hitter and take and hit the ball to all fields. Javon Smith swings at the changeup. Lehman trying to spoil the shutout. pitch Javon Smith with his years of experience described as a guy that's very good at laying off those curve balls at the D3 level and there's a curve ball and it hit him in the hand Smith is aboard and Lehman has spoiled the shutout 
Well, hold on. Did it hit the back first? Well, looking at Javon Smith's batting stance, he gets his foot down nice and early, and he's able to see the pitch and recognize it. So that might be why he's able to see breaking ball very well. He gives him time and to recognize the pitch. Yeah, it looks like a foul ball is ruled here as Smith. Let's have a second look. Smith was favoring his hand. I mean, certainly uh, based on like his reaction, his hand was hit. Yeah, that. that oh. So it's just a foul ball and it'll be a one two pitch coming. And a ground ball to short might be two. Creek into second one. Budzinski out to first. Yes, the double play. City College takes game one with their first shutout of the season. 10-0 over Lehman today. James Dean Johnstone going eight scoreless innings. And then Jack Daly is able to preserve it. Final totals, no runs, six hits, and two errors. 10-9-1 and one here for the Beavers. James Dean Johnstone picks up the win. He's seven and three with a loss to Richard Ila Acosta, one and four. Yeah, so Johnstone, you know, could not have scripted this any better. Going to eight innings, shut out, and his offense scoring in every single inning. They did a great job to set the tone and now have to look to sweep here. Game two, we can conservatively say probably 325. First pitch, you can join us right back here in the same link on Facebook Live. Beavers score in all eight plate appearances en route to the win. For now, as we pause for lunch with game two set to follow, our entire crew, our director, Dan Lippinoltz, producer, Mike Morse, for my partner, Andre Narvaez, I'm Ralph Finorchik. We'll talk to you soon from Coney Island in Brooklyn on Facebook Live. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Game two of Lady's Media, the Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. Twenty twenty two twenty three CUNY Athletic Conference Championships are presented by Health First, Health Insurance for New Yorkers, the official wellness sponsor of CUNY Athletics. The Hospital for Special Surgery, number one in the U.S. for orthopedics, is proud to be the official hospital of the CUNY Athletic Conference. CUNY University Student Senate providing our students the platform to shape the City University of New York. And Hometown Ticketing, the official ticketing provider of the CUNY Athletic Conference.
the CUNY Athletic Conference Baseball Championship. Game two is set after a 10-0 victory by City College in game one. Cups game number two for the top seed City College to try to take home their first championship today since 1994. Hi, everybody, and welcome. Ralph Bidnarchuk alongside Alliance University head coach Andre Narvaez on a comfortable afternoon in Coney Island and Maimonides Park. Let's show you how City College got the job done in game one. Their ace and the likely CUNY pitcher of the year, J.D. Johnstone, was terrific going eight scoreless innings. He did exactly what he was supposed to do as the ace, shut the team down, allow his offense to get the timely hits, play a little bit of a uh, small ball when you needed to, and uh, enjoy going up one nothing. Now you have to use the defense again in this game, uh, especially with who they have on the mound, and shut the door. Take it home a sweep. No need to play game three tomorrow. Ten runs on nine hits. Let's quickly show you the lineup here for City College. They are the visiting team on the scoreboard here in this game number two. Nearly an identical lineup for head coach Steve Macias with Angris, Cregan, Rivera, the DH, Chazanov, De Blasi, Supron, Bozinski, Savino doing the catching, the lone change, freshman Rich Sirigliano. Underway with a first pitch foul ball by Ethan Angris. Here from Randy Polanco. Polanco making his 10th start, 16th appearance. He's 2 and 6 with a 12.09 ERA for the right hander. 38 strikeouts over 44 and two thirds innings pitched. And Lehman has relied on him a lot to have a rubber arm. Polanco likes to work quickly on the mound, and you'll see that all day long. As he deals and misses high. Here to Ethan Angris. Polanco pitched Monday in relief in the victory over Baruch College. Picked up the win. Four scoreless innings. Three hits, two walks. As Angris takes a call, strike two. Three and two here to lead off the game. Polanco is senior out of Taft High School in the Bronx. Transfer from Borough of Manhattan Community College. And that's a call, strike three. Angris knew it, and he was on his way to the dugout. And the first man retired in this game two. Four, Good job of Polanco here, just filling up the zone, getting him on that low and away pitch. If he lives there all day, it's going to be a tough, tough day for the offense. And we see his season numbers there. He's been plagued by walks, 39 over 4, 44 and two thirds. But he was their number one pitcher last year. And very versatile. He's got the fast word with a downward action. And what James Sisko, his head coach, ninth year coach of Lehman, talks about he's got to finish those pitches and not leave the ball up. And he leaves the ball up here for Cregan, who skies it to center field. And the catch is made defensively here for Lehman. Just one change. They have the same starting nine out there. The outfield with Javon Smith in center. Glenn Jaron at left. Jeremy Santos goes from behind the plate to right field. Then the infield with Frederick De La Rosa at third. Ryan Rosa at short. Justin Nunez at second. Rancel Pinedo at first with Nomar Rijo doing the catching. He had started game one in right field. Jonathan Rivera was kept quiet in game one. And this ball in on the hands, and he's fisted out the center field, a base hit. He went five for five and hit for the cycle in Monday's CUNY semifinal, and that's his first hit of the day. The first base hit, number eight, Michael. Rivera keeps his hands inside the ball real well here, being able to take that inside pitch to center field. Rivera had taken it. And 0 for 4 was hit by a pitch at a sacrifice RBI. Called strike to Chazanov. And Chazanov was 1 for 3, also walked, and was hit by a pitch and had an RBI double. It's certainly a key here, Andre. Five stolen bases, most in the early innings for City College. How about stopping the running game here for James Sisko and his right-hander Polanco. 
There goes Rivera and Chazanov sends it in the year down the right field line. Santos has room and he makes the catch. So for the first time today, City College is retired and does not score in an inning. No runs, a hit, and one left. We head to the home first inning with Lehman coming up. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. You better get yourself ready, cause I'm about to do my thing. Oh, hey, hey. I'm sitting from the bottom, now I'm dancing on the high rise. Oh, hey, hey. I'm turning on the dime, now I'm flipping on the upside, upside. Home first inning, Lehman coming up. Let's have a look at the lightning batting order today. And it is identical from game one, except Jeremy Santos, instead of going behind the plate in game one, he is in right field. Nomar Rijo behind the plate and hits fifth. And the De La Rosa, freshman De La Rosa at the top with Fermin, Smith, Pinedo, Rijo, Santos, freshman Rosa, Justin Nunez, and Glenn Jarin. And making the start for City College is Brandon Pater. And considered to have a rubber arm where he could throw multiple innings in relief soon after starting. 11th start of the year, he does have two complete games, 5.34 ERA. He's 6 and 1. And a line shot foul by De La Rosa. And for Pater, he actually has more innings coming into today than. The number one pitcher, James Dean Johnstone, 62 and a third innings thrown, 47 strikeouts, 24 walks. So he has given City College a very good season. He's a sophomore out of Glendale, New York, in Queens, attended Monsignor McClancy. Last year, he entered the program as a little bit of a potential two way guy. This year, focused on pitching. And the one-two pitch is on the outside corner. Strike three looking, and De La Rosa is gone. Pater staying away, doing a good job, just locating that two-seamer. And then on this last pitch, breaking ball, sets it up real nice over the outside corner. Elias Fermin fouls off the first pitch, and what his head coach... Steve Macias loves about Pater as we see Fermin three for five day in game one for Lehman. He had three of the Lightning's six hits. Pater has the mindset of he is always going for the complete game. And a fastball strike. He plants it on the outer part of the a corner strike two guy that will attack and does not get rattled the bulldog mentality yeah he sequences four pitches and if he's able to control three of the four 80 percent of the time he's going to be lights out He's gone full to Elias Fermin, sophomore out of Riverdale High School in Yonkers. He's four years out of school, did not play for two years. Wanted to get back into baseball, and all he did is end up being called the purest hitter in the lineup for Lehman. 
Came into today hitting 306, and the three for five will certainly help. He also has a team leading seven home runs and tied for second of the team with 21 RBI. Had a swing and a miss, and Pater has struck out the first two. The center runner, number 17. Peter's doing a good job of living on the out, outer half of the plate. Again, just like in game one, we will see how quickly Lehman's able to adjust to this. Javon Smith was one for four in game one. Eight. Ended the game on that, what seemed like uh, should have been a hit by pitch, but mm -hmm. then grounded in a double play. Yep. Just a frustrating First game all around for Lehman, particularly in the early innings where they started to at least put some pressure on the City College starter and James Dean Johnstone. And Johnstone was doing it pitching on three days rest where you look like it looked like Lehman was a hit away from perhaps changing the course of game one. And the 3 0 Pater is over for a called strike. But Johnstone was able to escape, and before you knew it, he was in a groove, lasting eight innings. And he misses with the 3-2 pitch, and Javon Smith is aboard. And a two-out base runner now for the Lightning. The first baseman, number 77, Retzel Pineda. Rancel Pinedo, the leading hitter in the Lehman lineup, second in the CUNY's in batting average at 441. And a one for four game one takes outside. When you're pitching and you're just living on the outer half, like some of the greats, uh, you know, Clavin, uh, Maddox come to mind always, you know, for my error doing that. You, you have to live a fine line and not be able to walk guys and throw too far outside. As Pinedo takes ball two. Three and oh, and Pater has found himself overthrowing here these last two batters. City College has a full bullpen available. After their starter, Johnstone lasted eight innings. Right down the middle for the called strike. Then they went to Jack Daly for an inning. While Lehman had to go to three pitchers, two in relief that might not have been gone to in Smith and Mack in a competitive game. As Pinedo spoils it. So for Coach James Sisko of Lehman, he's got his starter in Polanco available. Tran Hennessy likely available and Christopher Delgado probably his top three remaining arms. He doesn't have the luxury that you know the Broncos have excuse me the Beavers have um, with being up one game. They go Smith and the pitch is outside ball four. So two strikeouts and two walks. And Pater will take a moment to collect himself before facing Nomar Rihar. Riho took an 0 for 3 with a walk in our first game. And Pater this time gets ahead in the count. Nomar was the catcher most of the early season when Jeremy Santos was out dealing with back issues. And then has split time since. Throw down by Savino and Chazanoff was playing off the bag there. And the freshman Chaz Savino certainly throwing the ball around. Uh, he had Chazanoff on the move like a wide receiver. Yeah, Chazanoff might have missed a sign there from his catcher. A lot of times you see the catcher will have a sign with their infield for uh, back picks just like that. And 
Pater shows that good fastball that he had through the first two batters. Two balls and two strikes. Lehman would love to grab the lead and put some pressure on CCNY. Two teams played four times in the regular season. And the Beavers took three out of four. Swing and a foul ball. No, nope, swing and a miss by Riho. No contact. And the tag applied by Savino. So Brandon Painter making the start for the Beavers. Strikes out the side, working around a pair of two out walks. We head to the second inning with no score in game two. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. Hey, so where's the ice cream? Boardwalk Scenics, our crew doing such a wonderful job going out there and checking things out on the boardwalk. We are not too far away from those in the boardwalk being filled. And frankly, for a Friday afternoon, what's supposed to be a work day, there are a lot of people out there. And we are fortunate to be here bringing you this game, this CUNY Championship Baseball Series, game two. City College looking for a championship, their first since 1994. They took game one, 10 nothing. That was a full nine inning game, no run rule scenario in this championship series. Tyler de Blasi at the plate. And Randy Polanco is able to come up with a breaking ball strike. Nice breaking ball froze the hitter there. Two and one. Polanco last year threw 38 innings, 39 strikeouts, and was their number one pitcher. As he deals a strike on the inner part of the plate. And he's got a fascinating story to how he got to the Lehman roster. And the 2 2 misses inside. Randy Polanco in the fall of 2021 walked into the nice apex gym that they have at Lehman College asking the coaching staff to try out. He was already in school at Lehman after transferring from Borough of Manhattan Community College through a bullpen, and the pitching coach, Darren Gurney, said he, yeah, he wasn't really good, but he saw something in him. Why don't you come back in a week? He threw much better. And now two years later, he is pitching in the do or die game as he walks Tyler de Blasi, and the leadoff runner is on for the Beavers. So you just never know that theme continues to pop up, Andre, particularly in your position as a college coach. You just never know when players are going to fall in your lap. No, not at all. Not at all. And you have to go out there and look everywhere you can to possibly find good players and, and also guys that can fill the roster. Steven Supra, he takes a call strike. CCNY in all but one inning in game one got the leadoff runner aboard. As a toss over to check. By the way, Randy Polanco, how about his pickoff move here? And in terms of his movement to the plate. He's doing a much better job, much better job than Acosta did controlling the run game. He's a lot quicker to the plate. Um, he's where college pitchers should be. And he's also thrown over, as you see here, thrown over twice just to keep the base runners honest. 
varying his times on the mound as well. That's always good. That's always something you want your pitching staff to do. And a line shot over second, a base hit for Steven Supron. Santos will play it back in. And Supron now with a base hit in each game. And the first two are on in the second. Supron stand back, not trying to do too much. Just good single there. Ball is at the top of the zone. You try and overswing on that, he'll pop up. Probably second base or a shortstop on that one. The only new guy in the lineup for game two for City College, Mike Savino. Squares to bunt, could not get it down. It went through, but then Riho throws it to center field. Now de Blasi got a good read on the ball in the air and is able to take third base on the throwing error. Yeah, you see, you teach catchers at this level when a batter misses a bunt to look to pick a guy off and back pick him. But as you can see here, he just, Riho just sails it right into center field. Just overthrew it, got a little too zealous seeing the runner so far off second base. It's a great running situation right here for uh, City College. That's Steven Supron who remained at first. And an 0-1 pitch coming to Savino. Not bunting here, and the pitch high. CCNY, amidst all the great things they did offensively, also executed a suicide squeeze from Alex Montanilli, the starting catcher in game one. And perhaps that is in play here. And the 1-1 one -one ground ball left side through for a base hit as Mike Savino delivers. In to score de Blasi, and the Beavers are out in front early. They've got the one nothing lead in the second. Polanco just hung a breaking ball on the inner half and did what he was supposed to do with it. Took advantage of it, got the hit. Now Rich Sirigliano. Infield pinched in at the corners, expecting the bunt. Sirigliano gets it down, charging the first baseman. Now the look back by Pinedo, and he throws to second to Nunez covering to get the out. Well, there was some aggressive thoughts there by Rancel Pinedo to try to go to third, but inevitably the sacrifice successful, 3-4. Pinedo did exactly what your coach to do at first base. You come up with this bunt, if it's hit to you, you look to third, you know you have time because the batter's gonna take more time getting to first base than the base runners. He played that perfectly defensively, good job. Ethan Angris. An angry swing there and a miss. He struck out looking to open up the game. Go check the rather Rich Sirigliano at the plate, thank you, pardon. Number nine batter in the lineup. As this ball is sending you to right center, a well hit, runner will have a chance to tag. Javon Smith makes the catch. The throw will go towards third base and be cut off. Sacrifice fly and an RBI for Rich Sirigliano. That chases home Steven Supron, and it's 2-0 CCNY. Another good job by Sirigliano at the plate. Game one, getting the three hits, and now getting a sacrifice fly to add another run. Now top of the order for Ethan Angris. As he reaches for it and sends it to the air to right center, Smith has it. But CCNY takes the lead in game two with a win. They would be CUNY champions for the first time since 1994. Two runs on two hits, leading one, middle of the second, and the Beavers lead again.
Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. Brandon Painter now pitching with the lead. And the first pitch fouled off here by the lefty swinging right fielder for this game too, Jeremy Santos. He struck out three, but also walked two. Santos' swing shows me he's a big pull hitter. Just want to stay away from him. Maybe throw him a change up away. Set him up for that change up away as that you know, last pitch for a strike or a ground out. Now Pater gets ahead, and meanwhile for Brandon Pater, we saw him self-correct during the first inning, a little bit like Johnstone. Yeah, Pater uh, wiggling in and out of a little bit of trouble. Santos skies in the air to left field. Well hit. It keeps going. And that ball is gone to the opposite field. A home run hit at Maimonides Park for Jeremy Santos. And Lehman has their first run of the day. They've cut game two to a 2-1 Beavers lead. What a shot in this ballpark. Yes. Mr. Santos, I will eat my words going opposite field with that drive. Stood back on that ball and used his legs, just powered into it. What a way for them to get on the board for the first time today, huh? He had a home run in Monday's game, which was key in the top of the ninth inning to make it be a 7-4 lead for Lehman over Baruch to eliminate the defending champions. But particularly to the opposite field, you'd have to do a ton of research to find the last collegian to do that here. Ryan Rosa takes a called strike. Santos with his fourth home run of the season and one no matter what happens, he is gonna remember. Now he squares to bunt, Rosa gets it down. Peter bobbles, recovers, throws in time for the out. Well, they went off the heel of the glove and Brandon Painter able to stay with it. He did a good job staying with that ball, not panicking because he missed it the first time. Unfortunately, Rosa got it a little too close to the mound. You put that closer to the line, and he's in there easily with a single. You always teach guys there's three lanes of bunting, third base, pitcher's mound, which you want to stay away from, and then the first base side. Justin Nunez takes a call strike. He went one for three with a walk. Had a double the ninth inning and was stranded. So Lehman has to go with the long ball to get their first run of the day in their 11th inning of batting. But it's a spectacular shot by Santos. Recruited walk-on catcher initially to Division I Manhattan College. So he had some real talent, called strike three, and Nunez is caught looking. 
fourth strikeout for Pater, two gone in the second. If it's a little off the plate for my taste, and I can understand why Nunez had some words for the umpire there. Len Jarin did the unthinkable and walked three times against J.D. Johnstone in game one with a ground out. As a pitcher catcher combo, you want to extend that striking zone, especially if you're going to stay away all day as far as you can, whatever the umpire is going to give you. And you kind of see where you kind of see where the end of his zone is. You got to find that out as early as possible. Pater gets light contact and a foul ball. This battery's doing a good job of that right now. Jared has shown his experience. Played two years and played a good amount in 2018 and 2019 at Division III SUNY Purchase before transferring over. So he is yet another sixth year senior in the Lehman lineup. And that was a little bit of a probe there to see just how far the strike zone might get expanded. Absolutely. Pater thought he was going to get that one. And he gets a ground ball, middle of the diamond to short. Cregan turns, throws, and a spectacular play. But Lehman is on the board. The spectacular home run to the opposite field by Jeremy Santos. Will it get the lightning started? Cregan defuses the rally. We head to the third, 2-1, CCNY. That play right there shows me he's got a strong arm. You can't make that play oh, yeah. until you have a weak arm. On your yes. school's yeah. website or in the new hometown fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. Let's have another look at the home run by Jeremy Santos, Andre, to the opposite field and left. He did a good job. Like I said, it was low and away, right, pat, right over the Coca-Cola sign there. And we have a little bit of wind. I took a look at the flag. A little bit of wind going to left, so I'm sure that helped him. But he got that ball out there and high enough to get it out. 11th home run of the career of Jeremy Santos. Randy Polanco misses low and away to John Cregan. And Cregan make a, made a heck of a play to take a base hit away from the lightning hitter in the bottom of the inning. He did, and that play shows me he has a strong arm to be able to make that. He's, his body is moving toward the outfield, toward right center, and he has to make a throw to first base, and you need a strong arm for that. Major League play from him. And Cregan trying to go out a winner at City College. Telling me before the game this is likely it for him. Looking at graduate school opportunities, maybe even in Northwestern's business school. 
to try to eventually work for an MLB team or work in baseball and player development or developing coaching plans. That's his dream job. At the pitch outside of the 3-2, ball four. And Polanco has walked his second batter. And both of them have come leading off innings. So Polanco has to do what Pater did not do in the last half inning. He has to put up a zero. Whenever your team scores as a pitcher, you want to go up there and put up a zero. Jonathan Rivera with a sharp single to center field his first time up. And he is a shoe in to be a CUNY All-Star and perhaps be the player of the year. Line drive the other way. Base hit it almost took the head off of Cregan. And then Cregan dives into second base. Well, he was almost stunned by his life flashing before his eyes. Throw came in by Santos, a good one to second, to try to force him out. Yes, and you can see Nunez is uh, looking at him, asking if he's okay. This ball is just lined right past his head. Oof. Good thing he was wearing a helmet. Gregan almost had perhaps his, the last game of his career end early. Yeah. Definitely prevented him from going to third on that base hit to right field. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to stop <laughs> taking the extra base. Chazanoff skied out to right his first time up. They're pinched in at the corners again, expecting a bunt. And Chazanoff takes ball two from Randy Polanco. Chazanoff does not strike me as a bunter. He's one of those guys that wants to hit those extra base hits. There goes Cregan. Pitch outside the throw by Riho. In time for the out on the swipe tag by De La Rosa. Uh, Cregan shaking his head. Let's have a second look. Ball definitely beats him. I'm wondering if he gets his hand. I don't think he gets his hand from that angle in time, even though he slid to the back part of the bag, which is what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I'm with you. I, no, no instant replay at the Division Three level as Chazanoff works out a walk. Rivera stealing second behind the play. Unfortunately, as we see that stolen base there, oh, he did get his hand in. A lot of times you see umpires make that automatic call if the ball beats him, um, but he did get his hand in there. You can see why the coach was a little upset. Now time is called, and here is the terrific pitching coach, Darren Gurney, out to pay a visit here to Randy Polanco. And with a pair of walks issued here in the inning for Polanco, and he'll face Tyler de Blasi. I've been in this situation as a head coach this past year where you send those runners, you take that risk, and they end up getting called out. And then on the very next pitch, the batter walks, where you kind of say to yourself, ah, maybe I shouldn't have been as aggressive. Saw so Gurney, Gurney motion some signs there to the catcher, Riho as they start off the Blasi with a breaking ball. Good breaking ball there by Polanco. Just left that one up. And a crown ball at the third. De La Rosa then looking to tag the runner, and he does. So he gets Rivera, who would have been forced anyway, crossing over. And de Blasi's is on. He is on via a force out. And two away for Sopra. De La Rosa gets the out. Good job by him. But I think he should have stayed with his instinct and go right to second base to get the double play. You're taught as a third baseman, you go where the ball takes you, and that ball's taking him glove side. So you go to second and then allow your second baseman to turn two on that. If there's a situation where the ball's hit toward his backhand, then you step on third and go to first. Suprun had single to right, 
and came around to score last inning. Good spot there. I like that pitch. Have to keep hitters honest throwing inside, especially if you're looking away, away, away. They'll start to lean out and poke it the opposite way. Trust his lower half there, leaving the ball up a little bit. And when describing Randy Polanco, it was mentioned about his stride. He's got to keep his stride long. Andre, that's a big difference maker for him. Yes, yeah. Yeah, stride can be uh, a critical aspect in your mechanics that go unnoticed. If you stride a little too short, you can end up being too over the top and your shoulders going over your front foot a little bit too much and you're spiking the ball. If you stride too far, you get the opposite effect where you're leaving the ball up. Supron spoils the 3-1 pitch and Randy Polanco has gone full. Now, I hear you say he spoils the 3-1 pitch and that's funny to hear because as a hitter, 3-1, that's the pitch you want to drive. You're looking to hit into the gaps or down the line for extra bases. Runners go. And the 3 2 is on the ground in fair territory for Pinedo. Caught stealing a big play in the inning after the first two were on for the Beavers. CCNY strands a pair, middle of the third, and the Beavers up 2 1. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Even people with their shirts off on the Coney Island boardwalk. It's such a nice day. Cape, Cape top temperatures were around 85 degrees. That was legit. Lehman coming up in the third, trailing 2-1. Brandon Pater has struck out four, walked two, and he has allowed his seventh home run of the season. An opposite field shot to left by Jeremy Santos in the second. And Frederick De La Rosa lines a ball down the left field line. That will fall into the corner. Angris will play it in, and it will be a stand-up double for the freshman De La Rosa to lead things off. Good job keeping that fair. So as a hitter, when you get your hands inside the ball well enough, you're able to keep that ball fair instead of hooking it foul. Elias Fermin. This is exactly why you say you want your pitcher to throw a donut up there because now leadoff double opportunity to tie the game. And Fermin puts a charge into one, well hit to left center, Sirigliano going back to the deepest part of the park, and that's off the wall. Back towards center field on his way to third is Fermin, 
De La Rosa is scored as the throw is offline. It's an RBI triple for Elias Fermin to the deepest part of the ballpark. And it's a 2-2 game in the third. He gets a hold of this one, gets a drive into it. The ball, you see the outfielder's reaction to it. And that's the wind right there. He's just, the ball just hits right off the wall. For me, and I don't know if you noticed, but when he gets in the third, he pulls out his sliding pad and looks like he made a call there. <laughs> Chance to take the lead for the first time today. Infield in for CCNY as Javon Smith fouls it back. Might be a little foreshadowing there by Fermin. Uh, they may have to call to the bullpen a little early because the Lightning are hitting Pater very well. All three hits have gone for extra bases. And Pater throws the changeup, and he gets ahead on Javon Smith. Two strikes. A single here, and Lehman collectively is hit for the cycle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Smith sends in the air. Shallow right center. Could be deep enough. Sirigliano makes the catch. Here comes the throw, and it's offline, but Fermin does not tag. And he goes back to third, and there's two outs. I'm not upset with that call. I like that, not sending him there because you have your Check that with one out. Yep, you have your best hitter coming up here, and now you give him another opportunity to drive that run in. And that is Rancel Pinedo. In that situation, maybe if it's an eight, nine hitter or seven hitter that just flied out, you might send him. And he puts one on the ground to third. Wad of Supron Creek and across his body throws. In time for the out, his second fantastic play. He held the runner with a look at Fermin at third and then got Pinedo by a step. That is a fantastic, that's great. Great play there by Cregan. Just ranges right there to his backhand. Same time, like you said, keeping the runner at third. I would have loved to have seen Fermin take off right there, right, right as soon as the ball is right off the bat. You, you know it's going to be a bad hop. You know if the third baseman's fielding it, he's going towards second. He can't get yet third. Take off. Go. Be aggressive. It's already tied. Take the lead. Now it's up to Nomar Riho and the Lightning lineup. Your dugout already has all the energy that they'd explode on that. Yeah, what a momentum changer this could be in the bigger picture for Lehman. After losing game one, 10 nothing, They got a mammoth home run to the opposite field. Now they've tied the game, and how could they take the lead? Sometimes as a offense, you just see a guy real well. It may be his motion or the way the ball comes out of his hands. And I think that's what's happening here with Lehman and Pater. And a changeup swung on and missed. That one was nearly spiked to the turf and a great save by Mike Savino preventing a wild pitch. Yeah, good job, Savino. That, that, that would have easily made up for the mistake in base running and given them the lead. Swing and a miss. Painter fans Riho with the fastball. So after the first two reach, with long extra base hits. He sets the next three down in order. But Lehman has tied the game on run on two hits. They leave one. We've got a good one. 
2-2 game, game two of the CUNY Championship Series on Facebook Live. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. You better get yourself ready, cause I'm about to do my thing. Oh, hey, hey. I'm sitting by the bottom, now I'm dancing on the half Oh, hey, hey. I'm turning on the dime, now I'm flipping on the other side. Upside, upside. I'm turning on the dime, now I'm flipping on the upside. 2 2 game. Lehman, after being held down for most of the afternoon in game one. And they were bidding for taking their first lead, but it is two all with their pitcher, Randy Polanco, coming on. Lehman needs to win to force a winner take all game three tomorrow. There is no automatic bid in the CUNY Athletic Conference in Division Three baseball. They only have four teams that play baseball, and you need six or more to qualify. So this will be all this weekend for these two teams. Kevin Bozinski, he had the RBI single through the left side that got the Beavers started in the second. I think Riho's a little upset there. He struck out on outside pitches and he didn't get that call there. Turned and looked back at the umpire. And this time maybe he bought himself a call. Polanco though was right there with it. One and one. And Bozinski puts a charge into one to pretty deep left field. Jaron going back, and that is gone! The freshman has homered to deep left. CCNY back in front, 3-2. His first home run of his career. Welcome to College Championship Baseball, Mr. Freshman. Wow. That pitch was up. He took advantage of it being up. The belt, uh, a little bit above the belt, actually. And it hits the top of the wall and bounces out. How big does that play in the last half inning of not going home on the ground ball look now? Nice breaking ball there. Mike Savino up. The Beavers dug out, still howling, and how could you not be? They're seeing that kind of shot for a freshman. Ground ball to second. Nunez, a little flat-footed, throws out Savino anyway. And this is what I was talking about the last game with momentum and energy. You know, Lehman had it an inning ago, and now all of a sudden, now you see that City College is starting to take it back, and they have the energy in their dugout. Lehman dugout's a little quiet, a little shell-shocked from that. Rich Sirigliano lifted a sacrifice fly and got an RBI to make it 2-0 in the second. Kudos to Polanco from coming back and getting the next batter on that. And he gets ahead one and two. So the ball flying out out of Maimonides Park for a college game. Again, if you were to look historically, home runs are at a great rarity. It's a ground ball, fair ball inside the third baseline and into the corner for Sirigliano. And he will race into second base with a one out double. Tommy Miller, 
Look at this ball staying right inside the bag. Umpire playing a little bit of uh, a little dancing over there. <laughs> Ethan Angris takes low. Now this can go either way for Polanco as a pitcher. You, you have one out, you get these next two batters, that runner at second base doesn't score. Or you can let it get to you and you implode a little bit and the inning can get out of hand. And Angris sends him to get a pretty deep center field. Smith on the run and tracks it down. Great coverage there by Javon Smith as Angris went to the other way to right center field. Yeah, and the third base coach was a little upset at his runner there. As you can see, the center fielder on this fly ball is going away from third base. This screams tag up, tag up. Get yourself to third base. There's a big backstop. You never know with a wild pitch. Up to John Cregan in the fourth inning. Has walked and flown out. But just like I was saying, Polanco gets this guy out, and that double down the line means nothing. He's utilizing his breaking ball really well second time through the lineup. This is how you pitch. This is how you understand. It's not just going to the mound and throwing. You go out there, you pitch, you have an idea, you have a strategy. And Cregan takes the 0-2 pitch and sends a single to center field. Getting the wave and coming at the score, Sirigliano with a throw cut off. And Lehman does give up the extra run. It's now 4-2 Beavers in the fourth. A two-out RBI single for John Cregan. Cregan's having a nice day today, hitting that ball right up the middle. Cut off. I think that was a good, smart cut off by the catcher calling that because it was offline. It was down the first base line a little bit. You keep the runner at first base by cutting it off. With Jonathan Rivera up, he's two for two with a pair of singles. Let's see if he takes a couple of pitches for Cregan here, who ran wild in game one. And Polanco with a nice breaking ball again. This is a good opportunity to send the runner because you know Polanco is throwing more off-speed pitches second time through the lineup, and you get your guy into scoring position with two outs. And Rivera bounces one to short. Rosa will go the easy way. Oh, nearly an adventure there for Nunez. Not he, so easy looking. <laughs> he stays on the bag long enough, and Rivera grounds into the force out. But out before, CCNY takes the lead. Kevin Budzinski's first career home run comes in the potential championship clinching game. He's put the Beavers in front again. Hometown ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new hometown fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy, with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. You better get yourself ready, cause I'm about to do my thing. Oh, hey, hey. I'm sitting by the fire, now I'm dancing on the half pipe. Oh, hey, hey. I'm turning on the dime, now I'm flipping on the half pipe. Look back, look back. 
home fourth inning. Lehman trailing again. It's 4-2 CCNY. And Jeremy Santos is up and all eyes at the plate right now after what he did in the second inning. Two and zero, oh, lifting his fourth home run of the season in opposite field, mammoth shot to straightaway left field. People in Luna Park better be on alert today. The ball is flying out of Maimonides Park. Called strike two and one. And Santos fouls it off of his right instep. Well, he just caught game one. Andre, uh, how do you manage catchers, especially these guys? As, well, he looked very fresh on this swing first. Yes, yes, he did. Maybe putting him in the outfield kind of helped his legs a little bit with that swing. But in terms of uh, managing catchers, this, this is why at the college level, you'll have four guys and three of them will get playing time. You'll have your starter, you'll have your backup guy, and then that third guy's in there, you know, depending upon whether he's a defensive catcher or offensive catcher, uh, he's in there for those midweek games, those non-conference games. Especially at the college level when you play double headers, you have to manage them. Yeah, in your conference in the CACC, there's a call, strike three. Well, Savino threw the ball down before the umpire had even made his signal. And Santos is retired. This is a good two seam. It kind of backs up a little bit, freezes Santos right there. It's a great spot, especially after a guy hits a ball low and away out of the park. Six strikeouts now for Brandon Painter, and here's Ryan Rosa. And that's a line drive over short, and a base hit will find left center field. And Rosa makes the turn. He is aboard. And Lehman now, in game one, they had just nine total bases. Here in game two, they have 10. Running hard, you like seeing that. He makes a great turn. Just in case there's a bobble, he's able to get to second base easily because he's in stride. And now a single, double, triple, and home run, the team cycle now for Lehman. The home run was, is, that's the hard part here. Yes. And this ballpark ironically plays well for triples. In terms of home runs, it's interesting. If you've ever been to Lehman's ballpark, it's called South Field. It is, uh, I'd say, one of the most unique and weirdest setups in all of college baseball you can do yourself a favor and google it but it's one of those old parks it's not exactly an enclosed stadium the four train runs through right field they have a hill you know the hill in houston where lance berkman and carlos beltran would have to run up yeah. they have that hill it's estimated probably about 250 feet wow so a lot of times, talking to Steve Macias about this when he used to coach at Lehman. 1-1, one, one, called strike here to Nunez, 1-2, and two, where you play your right fielder standing on top of that hill. And then on line drives, or let's say to field the ground ball, they're running down that hill to field it. Get a little momentum coming into the throw, huh? Yep. Line drive by Nunez, caught by Buzinski, and they got the runner doubled off. He throws behind Rosa, and the inning ending double play. Nunez hit it well, but Buzinski was able to track over and make the play. No runs a hit, and nobody left on base. Buzinski certainly stole the show in the fourth. 4-2 Beavers. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today.
How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Corner of Stillwell Avenue and Surf Avenue. Looks like it's busy today because Luna Park, maybe it's field trip day, but the rides are going. You know, on a Friday afternoon on a school day on May 12th. Maybe not a school day for everybody. And Michael Chazanoff fouls off the first pitch from Randy Polanco. Bit of a back and forth game today. Ralph Benorchik alongside Alliance University head baseball coach Andre Narvaez here from Maimonides Park hosting the CUNY championships again. CUNY championships have mainly been held here after in the early days in the 90s and 80s, Yankee Stadium, Shea Stadium used to host them. But this has been a, a proper home for them and good sized ballpark. Perhaps not big enough today because it's allowed two homers through four innings. And Michael Chazanoff takes outside then I touched on the Lehman College field and Andres you haven't been there I have not it's 265 feet to right field there's two fences so the first home run where the right fielder stands on top of the hill then has a fence at his back if it goes over that fence it's a ground rule double because then there's a second fence that is directly underneath the elevated train where the Ford train passes along the Lehman College campus. And now they have put a temporary fence in left field, which is 320 feet that they bring in. It used to be sort of picture a football field right next to and underneath an elevated train. There's a baseball field there at Lehman. As Chazanoff stays alive. And then center field, because of that, a little bit of kind of like Fenway Park that was fit into a city block in the early 1900s. Center field at, at South Field at Lehman College is 400 plus feet. Well, my hat's off to uh, Lehman Lightning. I know they were picked last in preseason poll um, in the conference, and now they're in the championship game despite being picked last and having that home field. 2-2 two -two to Chazanoff, and he is hit by a pitch again. He was hit twice in the first game. One did not count. They said he moved into it. And then he was hit officially. And the leadoff batter aboard again for CCN1. So the fourth time out of five innings, and Tyler DeBlasi will bat. And he squares the butt, lays down a perfect one. Polanco has only one play. Yeah, good job getting the out there. Um, that's, oof. That's not a great bunt right back at the pitcher. I would have loved to have seen Polanco attack that ball a little more. And I think he would have been able to get the runner at second base here. Kind of last three or four steps, just kind of sets himself up for first. We tell pitchers at the college level, attack the baseball expecting to go to the lead bag. Steven Supron takes a called strike. He's one for two. We saw Pinedo do it with first and second. He was in as a first baseman, charged it, looking to go to third, understanding you have time to get the runner at first. Polanco trying to make it through five. Lehman does have enough of their high-end pitching available. 
to try to get this game to force a game three tomorrow for the championship. A check swing by Suprun. Did he go? And they check and appeal over at third base. No go, says the umpire. And Supron, what was he hit? No, it skips in, it goes past him, and will go to the backstop. So a wild pitch sends Chavinov over the third base. Supron had to do well to avoid being hit. Yeah. Good job getting out of the way and allowing that runner to get to third base. See, it just bounces right in front of the plate, bounces over the catcher's shoulder there. Now the infield in all the way around for Lehman. And the count goes full three and two. Kevin Buzinski is on deck, who's already two for two. I'm not sure if I'd have the infield in in this situation. It's still early in the game and your team's hitting well. And that's ball four as Polanco Try to get Suprun to chase. And now runners of the corners one out. And will Lehman bring the, the infield back? Well, time is called. And we're going to get a mound visit here. But last time out, Kevin Buzinski with his first career home run coming at Maimonides Park. Yeah, that was that was about chest high when I was saying belt high. And you can see he thought it was going to be a double the way he runs out of the box. No bat flip there or, or trot right out of the batter's box. And in the 4-2 game, we're going to get a pitching change before Bozinski bats. So time called. We'll take a pause. CCNY up to threatening for more in game two of the CUNY championship. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Lehman's gone to the bullpen as they will throw perhaps their most versatile pitcher and one of their best, Tran Hennessy, who leads the staff at ERA with a 6.51, 3-2, his 19th appearance, 47 innings, 45 strikeouts, and just 20 walks. He's a fifth-year senior from Astoria in Queens in the Academy of American Studies. Spent his freshman year at Dean College in Massachusetts before transferring and was a CUNY All-Star last year. And Hennessy deals outside. He's got a three-quarter sidearm. And now he'll face the righty batter. Bezinski, let's have a different look at his home run. Oh, yeah, we can see that leaks inside. It was meant to be up and away. And uh, Polanco missing his spot there. Hennessy deals low. And then he's got what's described as the frisbee pitch, a slow curveball to right-hand batters. Three and oh to Bozinski. And they see last pitched on Monday. And he's available to go multiple innings. He started on Monday, five innings pitched, three earned runs. And he gets a strike over to Bozinski. 
Run at first base, Steven Suprun. In this game, Lehman has not, uh, rather, CCNY has not looked to run as much. And that 3-1 is low, ball four. So that doesn't matter. The bases are loaded. And here with one out, here comes Mike Savino. Savino's in a great spot here. Doesn't have to try and do too much. The pressure is completely on Hennessy. He has to throw strikes, nowhere to put him. And this pitch almost hit him. It ends up behind the batter. And a good grab by Nomar Riho. That's one you might be yelling at your uh, hitter. Hey, off-speed yeah. pitch. Take it off the back. Get a run. And this ball blooped in the air down the left field line, but backing up and making the catch Jarin. Tagging and coming in to score, Chazanoff without a throw. Sacrifice fly and an RBI for Mike Savino. CCNY has added another. It's now 5-2 in the fifth. Savino does a good job of taking a pitch that he can get to the outfield to scoring a run. It's a difference between striking out and putting the ball in play. They'll appeal over at third base, and the umpires say that Chazanoff left upon the catch, did not leave early. So Rich Sirigliano, sacrifice flying an RBI in the second, and then a double down the left field line, last inning. And a little number, weak contact, Hennessy will field, and the long underhand softball flip to first gets Sirigliano there. He had to windmill it, but he gets out of the inning. But CCNY increases its lead to three. A run on no hits and leaving two aboard. Middle of the fifth, we're halfway there. The Beavers now by three. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. CCNY is almost as comfortable as those people are right now on the beach in Coney Island. 5-2 Beavers. We start the bottom of the fifth. Ralph Dedorczyk, Andre Ar Ar Arvaya is here. Glenn Jarin will lead it off. 9-1-2 here for the Lehman Lightning. Brandon Pater has struck out six through four innings. For me, Jarn's the perfect guy I want leading off this inning. We need to get some runs. We need to get something going offensively, and he's done a great job all day getting on base. I've done a great job getting ahead in counts. Here's another 2-0 count to Jarn. And Pater gets the benefit of the call there. Two balls and a strike. I love Jarn's approach at the plate. And he takes a line drive and hooks it foul. Got a little out in front of that pitch that Pater left up. Okay. Well, when you're the number nine batter, what makes a good nine hitter? 
you basically want a guy who's, you know, the cliche is your second leadoff hitter. He's got to have a good eye, knows, you know, what the strike zone is going to be for that umpire that day. Has to be able to make contact, low strikeouts, and put the ball in play. And then most importantly, you get on base for your one, two, three hitters. Usually you try and find a young guy, freshman, sophomore, who's going to be a future leadoff hitter. And of course, speed never hurts. Speed plays pretty much everywhere. Yes. It's one thing you cannot coach. Swing and a miss with the changeup and a career high seven strikeouts in this potential championship clinching game for Brandon Painter. Very good sequence from Painter and then ends it with a changeup after Jarn was pulling those fastballs foul. Good call in that situation. Top of the order for Frederick De La Rosa. That one messed up a little bit. And he comes right back and is able to plant his fastball two and one. Monsignor McClancy in the New York City Catholic League. And this ball hit well by De La Rosa to pretty deep left field. Going back, Angris going back, and it's off the top of the wall. Finally recovered by Angris after he chases it down. And it's a deep drive to left by Frederick De La Rosa. And a one-out base runner for Lehman. De La Rosa thought first couple steps you could see he thought it might have gotten out the way the ball's been hit today. Left fielders have to do a better job of understanding where the wall is and not going to the bottom of the wall and letting the ball bounce so far in front of you. Understand it's going to hit the wall, play it off the wall, and then keep the runners off getting an extra base. Elias Fermin, he hit the ball as far as anybody. A triple to deep left center field, probably 390 feet away. Called strike there by Peter, one and one. So just watching the game, there are a couple guys that I've seen today that are at another level, and Fermin is one of those guys for me. Just has abilities that you see not everyone else on the field with him has. Yeah, James Sisko, his head coach, said he's the purest hitter on the team, and, and then when you factor in, he did not play baseball last year or in 2021 or in 2020, I mean, it's been three years. Wow. As Fermin is hit by a pitch. So 2 1 with one out. Be curious to see what kind of a player he would be if he had played for those three years. No, that's just a pitch that gets away from Pater there. He knew it. Turning around. Shows a little frustration there. It's a good job by his catcher, Savino, going out there, calming him down. Explain it to him. Just go get the go get the batters. He's still in a plus out situation, which means that if he got the next two batters that were coming up, no one would be scoring. So that's a plus out situation. It's less runners than outs right now. Now, if you have a runner at third base, then you're in a minus out situation. What do you want your guys to know about those situations as the 1-0 is popped up and it will be playable for Chazanoff. 
So what you see from an offensive perspective, let's say, okay, what we tell hitters is you're going to see a lot more breaking balls because the pitcher understands that there's a runner in scoring position and they can get in trouble quickly. And also on the flip side, you tell your pitchers to kind of relax. You're still in control. You still can get out of this inning like you just saw with a fly out there and then get the final out and there's no damage. Here's the guy that Lehman needs to come through big time. Their leading hitter, Rancel Pinedo, could be named CUNY Player of the Year on Monday when the awards are given out. The leader in RBI came in hitting 441. And now a step off and a flash play, and not in time. So they had De La Rosa leaning there a little bit with Bazinski covering. You hit the nail right on the head. Your, your, your stars have to come out in championship games like this if you're going to be successful. As Pater misses outside, patience was the difference this year. Telling us James Sisko, last year a 278 hitter, 15 RBI, nice player. And was their closer last year in relief. 2-0, and, oh, and this year his patience have led him to hitting better pitches and not over-swinging, and he has flourished. He's definitely showing some patience in this at-bat. And that is the 3-0 pitch, missed inside, ball four. So perhaps Pato knew Cater knew who was batting there in Pinedo, so he works around him and he'll go after Nomar Riho. And time will be called, and Pater is going to get a mound visit. It's one of those situations where even though first base is not open, as a pitcher, you know you have a base open. Out comes pitching coach Scott Loesch. He's been an assistant since 2015, was the head coach at CCNY for three years. 05 to 07, and he was a star in the CUNYs, played at Baruch College, was a three-time All-Star as a two-way player, 395 career batting average, and he played locally not far from here at Zaverian High School. So Loesch, the pitching coach, is back in the dugout. Nomar Riho will come up with the tying runs on base for the Lightning. This is a situation where Riho, he's behind Pinedo for a reason. And he's been struggling today, and he can come up and be a hero right now in this situation. And he goes up to the first pitch and crushes it to deep left center field. It's a long run for Sirigliano. He won't get it. It's between the outfielders all the way to the wall. Two runs have scored. They'll put the stop sign on for Pinedo. And Nomar Riho comes through with a big two-out, two-run double. And Lehman is back within one. It's now 5-4 Beavers in the fifth. Riho did exactly what he needed to do, just what I was talking about. You come up big, your big guy in the lineup was walked. Now you have to make the team pay, and he did that with that fly ball to left center. Now 23 RBI in the season for Nomar Riho. And this is the 30th game of the season for the Lightning. Now Jeremy Santos, chance to give the Lightning their first lead of the afternoon. CCNY has warm-up action going in their bullpen. Nothing in between, a solo shot to deep left and then a strikeout looking in this matchup between pitcher and batter. Again, the last two batters, you know, and maybe uh, the third base coach during that trip to the mound earlier was talking to his team. The last two batters going after that first pitch. We see the same adjustment that they made in the last game. You see warm up action down the right field line. Matthew Q for CCNY. Ground ball to second. And Santos is retired. But no more Riho. Gets the lightning closer. 
Two runs on two hits and two left on base. We head to the sixth. CCNY in this potential championship game. Their lead has been trimmed to one. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Back for the sixth inning. Two teams that have been starving for a championship. Meaning here CCNY has not won since 1994. As the first pitch swinging, and it's a ground ball past the third baseman down the left field line for Ethan Angris. And he coasts into second with a leadoff double. Angris looking for that double right away. Good job with it. Being the leadoff guy, showing off the stash as he gets to second base, too. I love it. Now, John Cregan. Tran Hennessy came in and eventually got the final two outs working out of a jam in the fifth inning. It's one of the things I love about postseason baseball. Everybody's engaged, everybody's having some fun. Both teams have done a hard, good job getting to this point. They deserve to enjoy it. Cregan stays back on it and bloops it to shallow right. On the back pedal, Nunez. And he makes the catch in front of the right fielder, Santos. And quickly plays it in. There's the first down. I could have turned into a, an ugly play there. You always have a, a practice where you go over this. You go over the infield outfielder communication. Of course, outfielder has priority, so Santos calling him off should have taken it. That's Nunez, and, and that's Santos, who is a big, strong catcher that is coming at you. And they're going to intentionally walk Jonathan Rivera here. So with one out and first base open. The first base number eight, Rivera had singled his first two plate appearances. Polanco got him to bounce down to a 6-4 his last time up. But the guy that could be the player of the year hitting 434 just has too much of a track record. So they're going to go after the lefty swinging Michael Chazanoff. Just like Riho did for Lehman. Chazanoff for the Beavers has to make them pay for that. And he serves this ball into left field. That will hold up for Jaron. And that portion of the deal works out for Lehman two away. This is why conditioning so early in the season and also in the fall is important because you're going to be playing in a championship game and you see these guys playing 18 innings. Chazanoff, you know, doing his work in the offseason has allowed him to look much better 
for both of these games. And he is hit by the very first pitch from Hennessy. There was that Frisbee curveball that just would not bend. And the bases will be loaded for Supra. And now Tom will be called. Out comes James Sisko. Well, Hennessy is his, usually his long man. This is not a guy that I think he wants to waste and pull after uh, basically getting four outs. It's been a long time for both teams. Lehman last winning the championship in 1995 under current CCNY head coach Steve Macias. And CCNY last winning the title the year before that in 1994, their lone championship. For a long time, Staten Island dominated the conference before they made the move three years ago to bump up from Division Three to Division Two. That certainly opened things up, and then Stevens Tech was in the conference as an associate member. Now they're a member of the Mac Freedom, so the window is there to try to challenge Baruch. And Lehman is here in their first championship series since 2003. Yeah, and you talk about CSI moving up to D2. We actually play them quite often. We have a uh, three-game series set to play them next year already. Mike's done a great job with making that jump up to the Division II level. Yeah, Michael Morrow there, along with previous head coach Bill Cowley. And Staten Island was like the perfect Division III program. So much good baseball talent in Staten Island to a school that you can commute to, similar to Kane yes. in the NJAC. And well, Coach Neal uh, uh, has had a Kane for a long time. He has. Being nationally ranked, making a few College World Series. And the 2-1 Supra lines it foul. And for the CCNY program, after that championship, the program became dormant. It finally came back in 2005. And three years later, they went to the CUNY Championship Series. They lost to John Jay in 07. And then did not appear again in the championship until last year, losing both games to Baruch. And a 2-2 misses high, and Supron has worked it full. So this for the Beavers is only their fourth ever championship appearance. Coincidentally, in 1994, they defeated Lehman in a one-game championship, 7-3. Runners from all three bases with two outs. And a 3-2 pitch is swung on and missed. Supron chased the pitch low and away. And Lehman shuts the door. They keep it a one-run game as we go to the bottom of the sixth. health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy, with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Tran Hennessy doing his job, getting out of a jam in the top of the sixth inning. 
to keep this a one run game to Steven Supra. Using the breaking ball well, Tran here, you can see is just getting ahead with it and then spotting his fastball. So this is similar to what I was talking about, how I used to pitch reverse pitching. And then a little bit of uh, emotion there as he comes off the mound, getting that big strikeout. Yeah, Trant is described uh, as a guy with super preparation, maybe the best that James Sisko has ever had in his nine years in the program, pre-game, in-game. Meanwhile, CCNY goes to the bullpen for the first time in this game, too. Here comes sophomore right-hander Matthew Q from Manhattan out of the prestigious Brooklyn Tech. True sophomore that works out of the stretch predominantly and always a guy that wants the ball in big spots. He's got a sweeping curveball. That is his special pitch. So Q will face the lower part of the order. And the first pitch fastball misses in. So Brandon Pater last five innings. And he strikes out a career high seven. Situation like this, you're a relief pitcher. I know coach talked about Q having some control issues. That's something you can't afford to have in this situation. You have to come out. You don't have a lot of innings left behind you. You've got to throw strikes. And he misses away. Numbers on Matthew Q, 0-3. 12th appearance with a 5.48 ERA. Inside and he hits Ryan Rosa leading off. Only the second pit batsman of his season in 23 innings, but the Lightning have the tying run immediately on. Yeah, so what I was talking about before, when you're a starter and you're starting that first inning, you know you have nine innings. You have a little bit of a luxury of walking, maybe two or three guys in five innings. But as a relief pitcher, as you can see here, he doesn't have that luxury. Four innings, that's it. Giving up these free bases can come back and haunt you. Q with just a token move over the first base. Justin Nunez lined out sharply right at the second baseman. Kevin Bezinski led to a double play in his last time up. He's leaving his fastball up a little bit too much since he come in. And he finds a strike one and one. And he's a pitcher, especially for someone that is full time out of the stretch. Described as someone that is almost obsessed with his mechanics, always working on that. There's guys that are always doing the band, working on velocity. Q is focused on mechanics. Gets a ground ball to third. Supron might be two. Bazinski to second, one out to first. A double play. Two outs in the sixth. Supron's defense has quietly been just a big, big asset for the Beavers as we see him start the 5-4-3 double play around the horn. To be able to have a third baseman lock down every ball that's hit to him in this situation is huge. Glenn Jaron was retired on a super play by Cregan in the second. And then struck out swinging in the fifth. If Q continues to have control issues, I would love to see Lehman be able to take some pitches, work some counts, and see if they can get some walks. And you feel like with Glenn Jaron, you don't have to tell him how to uh, approach it at that. No, he, not at all. he has certainly proven himself today. Oh, absolutely. This uh, this is a take all the way. I think everyone in the ballpark knows it.
There's a called strike, and Jaron thought he was on his way to first base. I think he tried to influence the uh, umpire with the borderline pitch there. Almost the same pitch, but it misses in ball four. So that'll turn things over to the top of the order now for the Lightning and Frederick Della Rosa. Believe it or not, you have to send Jaron. You have to. The first three pitches, he's got to steal here. He's got to be able to work this pitcher. Believe it or not, you're not working the pitcher just as a hitter, but also as a base runner. Get the timing down, get a good lead, make them think about you. And Q gets quickly ahead on De La Rosa, nothing in two. Jaron has stolen four to five bags this year. Chazanoff holding on against him. And if he gets thrown out, worst case scenario, you have your top of the lineup for the next inning. That was the pitch to go because it's going to be a breaking ball. Two fastballs quick right there. This one might be another fastball here, so this might not be the best pitch to go on. There goes Jaron, got a great jump line shot, base hit, past Supron into the left field corner. Jaron can really fly. The ball retrieved by Agris. Here's the throw, they got him. They throw behind him, and he is safe. Oh, the third baseman, Supron, did not realize that Jaron had already gone well down the third base line. They could have thrown behind him and maybe nabbed him. But it'll be second and third, two outs after the third double of the game by De La Rosa. Exactly what I was telling you. It's a fastball count, and De La Rosa does not miss that fastball, hitting the ball and being able to score it. And as you can see, Supron, there's no communication with him. That's where this catcher's got to be screaming 3-3-3, three, 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 letting Supron know to tag that runner. And now Elias Fermin, who has been the best hitter overall on the afternoon with four hits, including an RBI triple in the third. Now for the Lightning. Lehman has never led today in either game. And it's going to be an intentional pass. And Steve Macias has seen enough. He'll load him up and go after Javon Smith. I don't hate this call at all. And look the, at James Sisko certainly motivating his seventh-year senior. Absolutely. Absolutely. He was talking to him. I think he knew this was coming. I don't hate the call, but I'm not a huge fan of intentionally walking a college guy. These guys are not pro hitters. They're going to get themselves out. You make your pitches. You make see if he'll chase. And now with a check at third base to make sure that Jaron... I guess did touch the third base bag earlier. It's Q misses inside. How often have you walked guys intentionally in your head coaching career? Zero. Mm -hmm. And even as a pitching coach, we, we have not both the, when I was a pitching coach for Division I and JIT and also as this ball by Smith sent in the air to left field. Well hit, but Cerigliano on the back pedal makes the catch. Matthew Q works out of it. Steve Macias over in the Beavers dugout, pushing the right buttons. After the intentional walk, Lehman leaves the bases loaded as we head to the seventh. It's CCNY by a run. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access a member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets and they'll be right there in your account ready to be scanned when you get to your event download the hometown fan app today I'll give you something 
Still 76 degrees, just perfect here. Uh, now a late Friday afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us here from Maimonides Park in Brooklyn, Coney Island. The recent host of the CUNY Baseball Championships. Trad Hennessy, his second full inning of work as Kevin Bozinski takes ball one away. They have not gotten Bozinski out. He's two for two with a walk, including his first career home run. You can see Hennessy's trying to utilize his off-speed pitch early in the count. And Bozinski attacks the 2-1, and he clubs it foul. Trying to get career home run number two there. <laughs> this one grounded to short. Rosa. And Bozinski is retired for the first time today. Well, Hennessy got a lot of weak contact on Monday against Baruch. He was key to kind of set the stage and keep Lehman close and in the game early innings. He gave up five hits, three earned in five innings of work, striking out four against the Bearcats, who have several near 400 hitters. As Mike Savino takes the first pitch strike. Hennessy could also be a utility infielder, but they focused on him being just a pitcher this year. Inside, and he hits Savino. It was obvious they were trying to pitch into Savino there. The hole at bat, just a little too far in there. So his second hit batter, both times the breaking ball just would not break for him. And out of the number nine spot, Rich Cerigliano has Given the Beavers a lot of a lot of production. Time called. Warm-up action taking place for Lehman, and that's going to be all for Tran Hennessy. So Coach James Cisco is making the move. Hennessy, someone that can go many innings, and he's done here. Yeah, that's we'll take time out, tell you about the new pitcher for Lehman when we come back. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access a member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake. Twenty twenty two twenty three CUNY Athletic Conference Championships are presented by Health First, Health Insurance for New Yorkers, the official wellness sponsor of CUNY Athletics. 
the hospital for special surgery. Number one in the U.S. for orthopedics is proud to be the official hospital of the CUNY Athletic Conference. CUNY University Student Senate, providing our students the platform to shape the City University of New York. And Hometown Ticketing, the official ticketing provider of the CUNY Athletic Conference. One on, one out. CCNY batting at the top of the seventh inning. One win away from winning the CUNY Championship for the first time since 1994. Rich Cerigliano will be the batter. Here is Chris Delgado. Normally a starting pitcher. Might have been saved for an if necessary game three tomorrow. But Lehman needs him right now. He's made nine starts, 15th appearance. He's 0-8 with an ERA over 16. Has a good fastball, but he can be very wild. A major wild card now for Lehman. 38 walks in 30 and a third. He has struck out 22 because he has a low 80s fastball. And uh, Darren Gurney there, James Sisko, the head coach, they gave him two weeks to find himself. And we're going to find out pretty quickly. Yeah, two weeks in the college season is a lot, but that investment could pay off here if he shuts the door. And there is a good fastball right down the middle, nothing in one. And then he challenges with a the fastball there, nothing in two. Mike Savino is aboard at first. He was hit by the reliever Tran Hennessy. It's a good pitch throwing that in, getting in on his hands. And this one stopped just enough by Nomar Rijo. CCNY has certainly put up the stop sign, Andre, in terms of running. Boy, they were running yeah. no matter who was on the mound, especially on the starter in game one, Richard Illa Acosta. And a swing and a miss. Cerigliano tied up by a high fastball. And Delgado immediately fans the first hitter he faces. Yeah, completely different than the previous pitcher. You see lots of fastballs being thrown by Delgado and then the fastball up hitter can't catch up to that one little slide step and a ground ball left side base hit for Ethan Angris takes the fastball that he sees and there's two aboard Angris is two for four the shortstop number four Sean Kruger getting ready to hit you know fastballs coming just hop right on it no need to wait get deep in the count good job by the leadoff hitter John Cregan RBI single the fourth inning Delgado trying to expand the zone a little bit there. See how far out he can get a strike. And a little fastball, ground ball, base hit through the left side for Cregan. Getting the wave and coming home is Savino. Here's the throw by Jared, the slide, not in time. A two out RBI single by John Cregan. Give CCNY another tack on run. It's now 6 4 in the seventh, Beavers. Cregan quietly has had himself a day. Good job here. This is a great throw. You have a nice close play there. Oof, just misses the tag. Good throw by Glenn Jaron. Ethan Anger is able to go first to third on the ball, hit to left field. And now Rivera, they intentionally walked him last time. And that pitch is outside. What's the approach here, Andre? If you thought enough of a hitter to intentionally walk him, what do you do here? Uh, different pitcher here. So, you know, you 
Delgado has a little bit more life on his fastball, so he can go right at him and challenge him. Inside, and it ends up working out the same way. Rivera is hit by a pitch, and the bases are loaded again for CCNY. The first baseman, number eight. This is that play at the plate. I mean, it's a good throw, just a little off target. Just a little side note in the background, something I picked up with, you know, as a coach. I see Delgado's on the wrong side of, of the plate backing that up. He should be third base extended because that throw is coming in from left field. Time called. James Sisko has just brought in Delgado. And he is going to leave him in. What do you think the message was here? He's got Michael Chazanoff up with the bases loaded. Uh, I think that trip is just calm, t calm the big guy down, you know, he, tell him he's got good stuff, reinforce some confidence into him, and, you know, go get this guy. Thinking about the lineup as a coach, you have your four, the, their four hitter here, and if he can get through this, the next two innings are actually, should be pretty easy for him on the mound. And as we witness it in front of us here, Andre, and I think James Sisko is right on the money that the numbers don't tell the story about Christopher Delgado with that low 80s fastball. A guy with this kind of arm, an arm having an ERA over 16 just doesn't seem to match up. Yeah, no matter what velocity for whatever level it is, guys can hit fastballs. Round ball the first, taking it himself, Pinedo and Delgado limits any further damage but the beavers had some breathing room one run on two hits leaving the bases loaded seventh inning stretch time at Maimonides park in brooklyn ccny pursuing the program's first championship since 1994 they are nine outs away how easy is health insurance with health first absolutely easy with our app can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. It's just about dinner time. Nathan's is always open, except maybe breakfast. I can't see a Nathan's hot dog for breakfast, but <laughs> lunch time, dinner time, late night, overnight. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, my daughter Sophia loves hot dogs. I could see her having some for breakfast <laughs> if, if she could. Yeah. <laughs> now, the first pitch, or the second pitch inside for Matthew Q, and it hits the leadoff batter, Rancel Pinedo. So the Lightning will get the tying run to the plates in the form of Nomar Riho. Q got a big double play ball in the sixth inning, then proceeded to walk a man, gave up a double and intentional walk be before getting Javon Smith out with the bases loaded to preserve a one-run lead at the top. This time challenging Riho with his fastball. No more just missed that pitch. That that could have been a second double for him. Q 
Hugh stays with this fastball this time on the outer edge. He is on a relief of the starter. Brandon Pater working five solid innings. Pineda has any type of speed. I'm sending him on this pitch. I'm expecting an off-speed pitch low and away. Not going, and it was a fastball anyway that Riho lays off. The big hitters up here for Lehman. Pinedo's already on. Riho, the fifth hitter, and Santos with his great power is standing on deck. Great factoid by our graphics man, our power, Mike Canner. Unfortunately, there has been a batter hit in each of the last six frames, three full innings. Trainers going to work overtime yep. with all the uh, ice bags yep, yep. they'll be making today, huh? Three and two, Nomar Riho. Plenty of base runners on for either side. It's 6 4 City College, though with the lead over Lehman. And Q comes back inside again with that fastball. And Nomar was on time for that one. This pitch has to be on the outer half of the plate. He's locked in if it's inner half. A few extra signs there from the third base coach. I wonder if a steal's on, perhaps with a 3-2 count. We'll see if Pinedo will go. He's not, and that's ball four outside. It's a hit batter and a walk, and now Lehman has the tying runs aboard for Jeremy Santos. So now, Ralph, I'll, I'll flip the table on you. You play coach right now. No outs first and second. Do you, do you sack bunt here with Santos after yeah. he opposite field home run? I can tell you no matter who's pitching here, you do not. That's all for Matthew Q. He's coming out, and we're going to see Max Murray come in. He's going to make just his sixth appearance of the season with a 1.08 ERA. He's coming in. The Lightning again looking for the equalizer when we come back. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. pitcher on for City College. This game and then that ride is going to make your heart drop. Two on for Lehman and the slugging catcher slash right fielder Jeremy Santos is coming up and he's going to face six foot four sophomore right hander Max Murray of Ardsley, New York in Westchester County. Played at I Iona Prep. He's only thrown five innings this year, five appearances but a 1.80 ERA, eight strikeouts in five innings, only one walk. This is where college baseball is completely different from the pros. Everyone brings their closer in in the pros in the last inning, save the game. The college level, you have to bring in your best reliever when the game is on the line 
and in the bottom of the seventh, the game is on the line right now. And the first pitch fastball sent the other way, foul by Santos. The Lightning did get a good look at Lehman's, at, uh, at Murray, at Lehman in the doubleheader on May 2nd, where he actually threw an inning in both ends of the doubleheader. Also very unusual. And he gets a ground ball to short. Cregan, Cregan knocks it down and he'll have no play. Real opportunity there to get one. Probably too difficult to turn two. And now the Lightning with the bases loaded and nobody out. Yeah, Cregan misplayed this ball. Doesn't read the hops. Once you get that second hop, that top spin is going to eat him up. And he gets that in between hop. You have to be aggressive, charge it. And as a shortstop, you have to understand that you can only get the play at first there. You can't, there's no way you're turning a double play on that ground ball. Ryan Rosa. Chance to do some damage with nobody out. And Murray misses outside. It is an E6 on John Cregan. Looked like a 6-4. Would have been the routine play. And Murray comes back with a strike. from Savino trying to steal a strike two. Instead, it's two and one. You don't hear people say this too much, but Lehman's got the best part of their lineup coming up consistently today. Seven through nine hitters have gotten on base for him. And a swing and a miss. Murray showing his good fastball. He gets even with Ryan Rosa, two and two. A couple of inexperienced guys here. In a big moment of this game, Lehman needs to win to force a winner-take-all game three tomorrow. And a 2-2 pitch swung on and missed. Murray went after him, and there's the first out. Murray doing a good job of coming back into the count and being able to just blow that fastball or what looked like a fastball away from him. Let's get that foul tip right into the glove. Murray shows a slider away to Justin Nunez. Strikeout wasn't the worst thing in the world there for Lehman. Obviously, it could have been worse with a ground ball double play. Nunez unable to get around on the fastball. One and one. Murray played at Iona Prep. Very good Catholic League program. Produces Division I guys pretty consistently. Murray staying with the fastball after Nunez being a little late. Smart move there. 2-1, bases loaded. I can't see anything here but his best pitch, which has been his fastball thus far. Three and one. So Nunez would not bite on that fastball out of the strike zone. We were tied at 2-2. Lehman has never led in either game. And the pitch misses inside, ball four, and Murray has walked in a run. Lehman gets closer, it's now six to five with one man out. Coach Cisco has to love the fact that Jaron is up at the plate right now. He has a great eye, he's not gonna chase anything. He'll take the walk for the, the run to come in. And he's able to put the ball in play with some speed. They creep in at the corners, 
thinking a potential bunt, and Jaron takes a strike. Ground ball up the middle. I don't think they double him up, and that scores another run. Jaron has walked four times on the afternoon. Right on time with that pitch. When you see a hitter foul a pitch back like that, their timing is perfect. They're right on time. They just got under the ball a little bit. He has his fastball timed. And Jaron serves it down the right field line. Foul. Phenomenal job by Jaron trying to go the opposite way with that fastball on the outer half. See the outfield actually just shift a couple steps after that pitch. Two and two. And Sharon skies the 2-2 pitch to left. Should be deep enough to score the run. Angris makes the catch, tagging and coming at the score from third. No more Riho. Sacrifice fly and an RBI for Glenn Jaron. And Lehman has tied the game again. It's 6-6 in the seventh. Great at bat by Jaron to get that run in. Did his job, put the ball in play. Took this fastball as far as he would be able to take it out to left field. The left fielder doesn't do a great job of getting behind the ball to get his throw a little stronger to the plate. Not that I think he would have gotten him at the plate anyway. He was 300 feet away from home plate. I don't think he has the arm to be able to get him. Frederick De La Rosa took ball one. Del Hiroso looking for another double there. <laughs> Three doubles for him in game two. After taking an 0 for 4 with a hit by pitch in our first game. And Murray gets a crown ball. The third, it's booted and bobbled by Supran, and everybody's safe. Superin was about to just step on third and get the force out. And what has overall been a very good day for the third baseman from Dallas. This might cost City College. Yeah, this is a rare error by Superin. We've seen him lock down third base. He just takes his eye off the ball too soon to look for the bag. It's one of those where it's an easy one and you know you're going to get the out. I think Santos got hurt on the play. Yeah, Santos uh, maybe lost his, got the wind knocked out of him or something as he receives some medical attention with timeout being called. The athletic trainer will come over to check on him. He's cramping up. Looks like the calf is cramping on him a little. Yep. The trainer's having him stretch out the calf. See Santos using those big legs to try and get to third after he thought easy play, easy out there. May have cramped up after he was just taking a nice little jog and then had to speed up. After catching nine innings in game one, right field in game two, 
And in case you don't know, the turf can add up to 15 degrees. So if we're at 75 right now, it can feel like 90 degrees on that turf. Here's Elias Fermin, nowhere to put him. Base is loaded, two down. And Murray starts him off with an important strike. Lehman has never led. We were tied at two for the first time today in game two. At City College, retook the lead with two runs in the top of the fourth, including a solo shot by Bozinski to left. They would make it 5-2 into the bottom of the fifth. Lehman will respond. And Fermin went around. Tough pitch there for Murray. One and two. Lehman had cut it to a 5-4 game after five. It was 6-4 at the start of the inning. And now the Lightning have tied it. Trav getting into it. Sophomore Max Murray. And they must see something on Fermin because everything is in, in, in. So they, they don't want him to extend his hands. He's one of those type of hitters. I can understand that. But they might see something else playing each other so often in the season. And Fermin extends his hands and sends it to right center. That's a base hit. One run scores in Santos. Here's a throw to the plate, not in time. And for the first time in today's doubleheader, the Lightning have the lead. It's 8-6 Lehman in the seventh. Elias Fermin with a two out, two run single to right center. Just like you said, extending his arms Loving it, arm in the air. He knows he gave his team a two-run lead right there with that hit to right center. Javon Smith will bat. Ninth man to hit in the inning for Lehman. It's the first time they've batted around in either game. That is a balk. No throw by Murray. That is a balk. It has to be a balk. Well, hold on a moment now. Our field umpire. I think the first, I saw the first base umpire call a balk. Now, now they're going to send the runner back to first base. Fermin thought it was a balk. See this here, he's on the rubber. So he has to separate and disengage. That is a balk. That is an obvious balk. If they don't get this call right, they're gonna miss it. You've gotta throw the ball to first. On that, yes, so that's a jump turn. You have to throw the ball to first. Uh, as a pitcher, you have to disengage the rubber first, and then you don't have to throw because you become an infielder. When you do that jump turn over to first, the rule is you must throw the ball. Well, the look on the face of James Sisko said it all. That's a big call right there because you, you give them another run. Lehman would have another run. It'd be 9-6. And now you would put Fermin in scoring position for Smith. Smith is tied up there. Nothing in one. That's a big miss by the, this umpiring crew who's been pretty good today. Smith gets under it and skies it a mile high. Angris coming in in left field makes the catch. We'll see if that call or non-call comes back to haunt the Lightning. 
but Lehman has taken the lead for the first time today. They pick up four runs on two hits. The two-run single by Elias Fermin. Eight, six, lightning into the eighth. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. The Lehman Lightning now playing with the lead for the first time here. Off the corner of Stillwell and Surf Avenue is where Maimonides Park is essentially located. Coney Island, Brooklyn, historic Coney Island, Brooklyn. Tyler de Blasi takes ball one outside from Christopher Delgado, who came on in the top of the seventh inning and allowed a run. But now he's pitching with the lead. Lehman must win. To form, to force it if necessary, game three tomorrow. Delgado's only job right now is to get this leadoff batter out, keep him off base. Three and zero. Meanwhile, for City College, they won game one earlier, ten nothing, nine inning game. With a win here, the Beavers would win the CUNY championship since 1994. And that's ball four, and immediately de Blasi is on. Well, we told you in the last inning, Delgado is a real wild card for this Lehman team. Steven Supron will bat. Yeah, Supron has the opportunity to uh, pay his debts with that error in the last inning. And he gets a good cut at the fastball. So with Delgado, with the leadoff guy getting him on, that's something, you know, as obvious as it seems, you got to challenge the guy. You have a two-run lead, he hits it a mile, it doesn't matter, you're still winning. And a ground ball right side, Nunez circles under it, has only one play. Very smart by Nunez, just get the out. So the Blasi is able to advance to second. Yeah, Nunez does a great job. He's going glove side. There's no way he's going to get a double play. Get the out. Kevin Bozinski takes the fastball strike. Well, they are well in at first base. Rancel Pinedo is very close before backs off. And that pitch off the glove of the catcher, Riho, but there's no advance. De Blasi may not have really picked up on the ball. He should be standing at third base. Absolutely. And the third base coach is yelling at him right now, letting him know you have to be there. With one out, it changes the situation completely. You can get a productive out and score a run there. Now a flash play, the throw goes into center field and de Blasi slips and then the ball goes under the center field of Smith's glove. Here comes de Blasi, now he gets the wave. Smith recovers, the throw is way late. It's a little league run for CCNY. It's a one run game of the eighth. I guess Smith decided to help him out after uh, the base running mistake with a mistake of his own.
you can see here, there's no, de Blasi's not going anywhere, but Smith just takes his eye off the ball. All he has to do is just keep the ball in front of him. De Blasi had already committed to staying at second. Bozitski misses high. That'll be an E8 on Javon Smith. And it's one of the Blasi can exhale. Yeah, the one two Bazizi drives into deep left field. It is hooking. Foul into the Lehman bullpen. I saw some some fans standing up out of their seats on that one. That was close. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a situation where you have to just slow the game down. You can't allow the pressure to get to you. Slow the heart rate, be in control, and play your game. Three and two. That's a big two base error by Smith in center. Delgado can be a leader here and just shut the door right here. Half pitch to Bozinski. So City College has immediately gotten a run back. 8-7 Lehman with the Beavers batting in the top of the eighth. Game two of this CUNY championship. On the outside corner, strike three looking. All I'll say about that is a uh, good pitch, as you can see here where the location was. I'll leave it up to you at home to decide whether that was a strike or a ball. Bozinski mm. stoically did not even turn at the umpire, so here's Mike Savino. And he takes the first pitch and clubs to the deep left on the run. Jared looking up, and he helped to play it up against the wall. Savino hustles his way into second base with a two-out double. Savino attacks that pitch. That's just bread and butter right there. Right down the middle. For a split second, I thought that had a chance of going out, especially where the wind's blowing to left. So Rigliano looks at the fastball. So now second time through for the Beavers as Sir Rigliano struck out against Delgado last inning. You want to save Angrist at the top of the lineup for the next inning. Got to get this guy here. And Sirigliano might have helped him out reach for the pitch on the 0-1. And that is Jeremy Santos to put it away. CCNY gets one back. An unearned run on one hit and one left. Middle of the eighth. 8-7 eight, Lehman. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access a member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, Buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today.
It's been a long day of baseball here, CUNY Baseball Championship. It's a doubleheader, two nine-inning games. Game one comfortably to City College, the top seed, 10-0. Here it's been back and forth, and Lehman, the three seed, must win to four, force a game three winner take all tomorrow. And Max Murray's first pitch to the top of the order, and Frederick De La Rosa is outside. Go check that. This is Rensel Pinedo. And the last inning allowed the lineup to turn over and, and get your top bats, starting off with Pinedo, another A-B in this game. Max Murray came on into a tie game, two on, nobody out in the seventh. And this ball shooting into left center, Pinedo hit it well, but there is Sirigliano. CCNY has done a really good job of putting a leash on Pinedo and just preventing him from doing any type of damage. Mm -hmm. Nomar Rijo is up. Just the sixth appearance of the season for Max Murray. He hasn't faced pressure like this. And his fastball is sent in the air again to center. And Sirigliano puts that away. So Murray has come out and challenged hitters throwing strikes. One more fly blow to Sirigliano and he'll uh, tie a record. Santos hit what could have been a 6-4 force out, would have been a key first out last inning. That uh, John Cregan could not handle, went as an E6. And that certainly opened up the floodgates to the big inning for Lehman as they scored four times. And Santos pounds one on the turf to second. Bozinski, and right back in the dugout, Max Murray and CCNY. We go to the top of the ninth. Lehman three outs away from forcing game three. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Lehman Lightning are three outs away from a game two win and to force a winner take all game three for this CUNY baseball championship series. Ralph Dinarchik alongside Alliance University head coach Andre Narvaez. Great to have you with us today. Top of the order here for the Beavers against Christopher Delgado trailing by a run. And Ethan Angris takes high. Surprised Angris isn't uh, possibly bunting for a hit here and challenging Delgado to fill this position. And 
Delgado frustrated with himself there as he did not finish his, his follow through. And Delgado able to take a little off and drop in a strike to the dismay of the CCNY dugout. Three and two leading off the ninth. Big pitch coming up right here. So set the tone for the inning. And Delgado loses him on ball four. Left that well high, and the tying run is on instantly for the Beavers. This was stopped. Number four. Second five, walk issued by Delgado. Three. Now John Cregan, and we'll see how CCNY will play it. You have Cregan, one of your best hitters. Angris is also a pretty good runner. Stole five out of seven coming in. Stole a bag in game one. But right now, we're seeing the wildness component of Christopher Delgado that he has dealt with through his career. Yeah, I'm coaching third base and I'm calling my signs. I'm a little patient here. I'm not going to get too hasty and see if Delgado can get himself in trouble. He may be able to put the go-ahead run on base for you. Plus, you have your best hitter up. There's no way I'm bunting with Cregan today. And you see Delgado take a little bit off there with Cregan taking all the way. Nice lead over at first. There goes Angris. Pitch inside, line shot, base hit to left center field. Smith will cut it off before the wall. Angris will get to third base with nobody out. Beautifully executed hit and run. That's what I mean. I'm, I'm a little patient to see what the count kind of dictates on what I'm going to call as a coach. And then you see an executed hit and run. I will say Smith does a great job of cutting that ball off from getting past him because that would have easily tied the game up. Pressure swing from John Cregan and now Jonathan Rivera. Now with Cregan at first, I might be a little more aggressive early in the count to send him. There he goes, first pitch breaking ball and no throw by Riho. And a stolen base moves the go-ahead run. Now into scoring position for the Beavers. And there you go, executed perfectly. I will say I am, I do not like that the infield is in right now. I do not like it at all. You're just giving them the go-ahead run. He gets a huge jump at second base. And inside, and Rivera is hit for the second straight plate appearance. Well, Andre was about to tee you up. You got the maybe player of the year. Do you consider walking him again? And instead, we'll never find out your answer because now Chazanoff will bat. Still nobody out. And out comes James Sisko. And he is going to go to the bullpen. CCNY knocking on the door from tying the game, if not taking the lead. It'll be David Torres coming on when we come back. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. 
It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. The bases are loaded and CCNY has nobody out as they look to tie and or take the lead here in the top of the ninth. And here comes David Torres, a junior right-hander from Monsignor Scanlon High School in the Bronx. And for Torres, he has had to work his way back from shoulder tendonitis. He was shut down for a month and only cleared on May 1st. So your guess is as good as mine for Torres, just his fifth appearance of the season. He's thrown 11 in the third innings, 9.53 ERA, seven strikeouts, 10 walks over that time. But opponents only hitting 250 against David Torres. He last pitched on April 2nd against John Jay. Healthy now, but tendonitis can be tricky. And he comes into a situation where there's little to no margin for error. Yeah, not, not pitching in so long. I'm curious to see what his control is going to look like. And then again, Lehman has the infield in up one run here. Very curious about this call. Well, they love the fight, the competitiveness from David Torres. He takes the ball here. And he misses low to Chazanoff. Last year, Torres was considered the number two pitcher for Lehman when healthy. He threw 31 innings last year at an ERA of nearly 12, striking out 28. Inside, and Chazanoff almost hit by that pitch. 2-0. He's already had his brushes with the law. Being hit once and nullified the second time he got away with it. Runners lead from all three bases. 8-7 Lehman trying to close out CCNY. And Torres drops in a strike. And looking at Torres's numbers from last year to this year, you can tell something has improved because there's a big drop in batting average against. And Shazanoff takes ball three. Over a month between appearances for David Torres. Chazanoff sitting dead red. Wherever he likes that pitch, that's where he's looking right now. Anything else, you take it. And the 3-1 is blooped into left center field. Falling fast, that's a base hit. One run will score to tie the game. They'll send the next runner. Rosa's relay throw, not in time as Cregan scores. And the Beavers back in front, 9-8 in the ninth. A two-run single the other way for Michael Chazanoff has given CCNY the lead again. Yeah, and, and you can see you can see here this is an easy score for for uh, CCNY with the infield in. A runner at second got a great jump, even though it was somewhat close. Uh, I'm curious to think if they were back and they keep him in a little closer, maybe one run comes in there because he doesn't get such a great jump. But I'll tell you what, Torres is not out of the woods right now with second and third and no outs. Infield stays in. And De Blasi takes inside. Tyler with a walk and a hit by pitch. His last couple of plate appearances laid down a perfect sack bunt earlier. And he makes Torres throw a strike. Chazanoff took second on the throw to the plate. Jonathan Rivera is aboard at third. And a line shot base hit through the left side for de Blasi. Rivera scores. They hold Chazanoff at third. Tyler de Blasi adds to the lead. It's 10-8 CCNY. This is uh, 
This is a good piece of hitting. As you can see, he loaded and kept his hands back in order to hit the ball to left field. Still nobody out for Steven Supra. Hitting is contagious, and de Blasi has caught it. And this ball will go to the backstop. No advance from Chazanoff, but taking second base on the wild pitch is de Blasi. Chazanoff staying at third is not the end of the world. It's okay because an out here would still score him. Well, the infield was back, Andre, on the first pitch. Now the infield will come back in for Lehman. With the double play out of the mix. Torres does not look comfortable on the mound for me right now. If I'm Lehman, I'm getting someone up, ready to go immediately. Slowing the game down a little bit, giving them more time to throw. And he gets the strike. I know Lehman has more depth in, uh, in the bullpen than normal, but I don't know who else they really have to go to, though. And no swing. This one gets away from the catcher, Riho, and Chazanoff will score. Had to hold up to see, did Supron foul it off? It appears he did not. It'll be another wild pitch. And CCNY tacks on another. It's 11 to 8. And de Blasi takes third. To see a breaking ball here. Uh, it looks like uh, Riho gets a little lazy going after it. Tries to scoop it like a first baseman instead of blocking the ball and keeping it in front of him. Big hitters count. And Supra takes ball four. Torres' strike to ball ratio is not good right now. Now time called again. David Torres, six weeks between pitching. Trying to get himself healthy, dealing with tendonitis in season. A guy that wants the ball with a mentality in, in big spots, but just wasn't able to be himself. Another pitching change coming in for Lehman. It's 11-8, CCNY. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Well, CCNY all smiles as they have scored four times already in the top of the ninth, still batting with nobody out. And the third pitcher of the inning on for Lehman is their closer from a year ago, turned fantastic hitter, could be the player of the year, him or Jonathan Rivera. We'll see how the voting comes out Monday. But Rancel Pinedo 
a guy that doesn't need much time to warm up. So he comes from first base to pitch. Pitches in the low 80s and has been spotty in terms of throwing strikes like most Lehman pitchers. And the numbers on Pinedo this year, an ERA of nearly 22, seventh appearance, six and two thirds, eight strikeouts, seven walks. And a first pitch strike to Kevin Bozinski. But he's got experience after being the closer last year. 10 appearances last year to an ERA of around eight. Runner goes for first soup run, throw down by Riho, high throw. Now they throw back behind the runner and back to third base, Tyler de Blasi. Yeah, Stolen base for Supra. Pineda reminds me a little bit of uh, the first pitcher of the day for Lehman, uh, Acosta, with a slow, slow time to the plate. And now the infield back in all the way around for Lehman. Good breaking ball there. Sets up your one-two count very nicely. He can go breaking ball again off the plate. He can go fastball. Allows him to open it up to what he can throw. And Basinski reaches for, grounds it to short. Rosa will go home, tag play, and de Blasi is out. Well, Rosa was on the money with the throw. There's the first out. Yeah, that's an easy play for a shortstop. Balls hit right at him. He doesn't have to move side to side at all. He can just feel this. As you can see right at him, a couple steps, good throw, good footwork, takes his time, doesn't rush to throw, easy out. Now another ground ball, double play, and they get out of this. Squeeze play, laid down by Savino, and scoring from third base is Supron. Second time today, the suicide squeeze executed beautifully by CCNY, 12-8. That was a phenomenal call by the third base coach there. Takes some guts to uh, call a suicide squeeze. And then on a breaking ball, makes it a little easier to bunt it. Good job getting bat on the ball by uh, Savino. So Rigliano takes outside. Supron had such a huge jump, Andre. Yeah. He was almost able to shake hands with Riho behind the plate. Yeah. He was almost able to field the ball himself yeah, yeah. if you really wanted to. Little mistake there by Pineda. I think take the out. I know the squeeze is on. You want to prevent runs, but get the out. You have two outs, and you can get out of the inning with this batter. Now the only way you get out of the inning without facing the top of the lineup is a ground ball double play. And the 3-0 is inside ball four and Pinedo could not drop his breaking ball in for a strike. The bases are reloaded and back to the top of the order for Ethan Angris. He started all of this, Andre, by working out a walk against Christopher Delgado. Delgado lost him on the 2-2 th pitch in the 3-2. But Angers had a good at-bat prior to that. Yes, Angers being great leadoff guy, setting the tone for the inning. And like I had said earlier, that 3-2 pitch was going to set the tone for the inning. And look at where we are. They've scored five runs with only one out. What a difference a pitch makes. Mm -hmm. You get him out on that 3-2 and one out facing the second batter, you still have the lead. Angers takes a strike, two and one. The base is loaded with one down. No warm-up action for CCNY. Lehman just about out of pitching. And Angris lines up all the base hit to center field. One run will score. The throw is cut off. Another run will score. And the route is on here in the top of the ninth. A two-run single for Ethan Angris. Chases two more home. 14 to 8 Beavers. Yeah, Delarosa here 
excuse me, Angris, my apologies, Angris here, might as well have just put the trophy into CCNY's hands. Six run lead with three outs, that's gonna be tough to come back from. And of course, we only have one out, the inning's not over, it could be more than six. Kozinski and Savino racing home to score. John Cregan, perhaps the most significant hit of this inning, came from John Cregan. It did not drive in a run, but that made it first and third, nobody out, and put the tying run over a third in Angris about 25 minutes ago. Oof. Remarkable for John Cregan, and if this is the last game of his career. You know, I was thinking to myself, who would be a player of this series if I the, ended today? And I think that says it all right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And to include his defense, too. He, he did make that, of course, that, that key error that opened up the floodgates for Lehman, which gave them the 8-6 lead. But then for him to come through with that hit in the top of the ninth inning told you a lot about who John Cregan is. Yeah, he definitely atoned for that defensive mistake. Even last year as a, as a freshman, a junior academically, Steve Macias said that he's the rock of the team as consistent we go as he go. They go to the runners, and a ground ball hit and run. Base hit through the left side. The runner is slipping up, and now getting up and trying to score. Here is Sirigliano, and he will. The ball getting away. It's behind the plate, and both runners will advance. John Cregan comes through with an RBI single in the ninth inning. He's two for two in the inning. 15-8, Beavers. This is just a remarkable play by the runner to uh, not only not get hit by the ball, but then to score after he slips and falls. And that was Sirigliano. Cregan able to take second on a throwing error that allowed both runners to advance. And here's Jonathan Rivera, the bases with second and third in the infield in. And Riho backhands that pitch from Pinedo. And certainly a demoralizing top of the ninth for Lehman. And they were three outs away from forcing a winner take all game three tomorrow. In which you never know in college baseball as Rivera fouls it back. Absolutely. Teams would have been backed into a big corner on both sides in terms of pitching. Yes, CC and Y feels pretty good about their depth. However, Johnstone is used. You couldn't be able to use Pater either. And you never know. Yeah. And they had to use Max in this game. You never know how he rebounds in a back-to-back -back day. And Rivera pushes one through the drawn-in infield for a base hit. Angra scores. Rounding third is Cregan. The throw is cut off. And the Beavers continue to pour it on in the top of the ninth. Two-run single for Jonathan Rivera makes it 17 to 8. Rivera just staying back real nice. Easily scoring both runs. And now in the top of the ninth, this has been a bad inning, awful inning for Lehman. They have to feel really bad right now uh, about how this turned out, giving up more runs than they've scored just in the ninth inning alone. A 10 run top of the ninth inning. Michael Chazanoff fouls it off. He gave CCNY the lead among the biggest hits. Certainly Cregan's was 
substantial. But then with the bases loaded, Chazanov greeted the reliever Torres with a single to right. And now Chazanov is two for two in the inning as he lines one to right. Rivera stops at second. Not too long ago, we were talking about a potential balk that might mean something big. And now, I mean, that we just see that way in the rearview mirror with this inning here. This just goes to show you how you need depth at the college level in, pit, in, in your pitchers. Yeah, and Andre, I'll put it to you this way. In, in my years of broadcasting, there's pitching depth, and then there's conference tournament pitching depth. Yeah. And I think th those two things, you can have depth, but you may not have conference tournament pitching depth. That's yeah, way different. Absolutely right. As Pinedo will airmail one to the, back, to the backstop, and a wild pitch, and both runners will advance. We have Tyler de Blasi at the bat. I remember back, I referenced the 2007 Big East Tournament. UConn had made a run against Rutgers. UConn was like the eighth seed in the Big East Baseball Championship here against against Rutgers and both teams had to start in what was a long tournament I think it was yeah both teams I think had played six games either five or six games both teams had to start their number five starter based on the depth chart and asking for big things out of him yeah yeah that's tough and and you'll even see that at the SEC tournament beginning which is a, as wild a tournament as it gets. Absolutely. Uh, because everybody is talented. Absolutely. When you get into postseason play, that's why you see pitchers throwing 120 to 130 pitches in a game, especially starters, your top of the rotation starters, because you know how critical it is to have those top arms saved, especially a lot of conference tournaments in college or double elimination tournaments or a series like this, you would see. Tyler de Blasi had an RBI single to left against the drawn in infield earlier this inning to make it 10-8. Takes inside from Pinedo. Even when you get to the Division I regionals, you have your four teams in the region and it's double elimination. You know that you have to have four starters to be able to get through that weekend. And de Blasi continues to spoil as he puts that into the Beavers dugout first base side second and third still only one out here in a marathon top of the ninth there is a zero up on the scoreboard which does not indicate no run score it indicates there's no room to put the one in front of the zero and that's ball four outside to de Blasi so the bases are loaded again and here comes Steven Supra and especially Steven conference Super. tournaments uh, where you are usually asking for pitchers to pitch in spots that they're not accustomed to. Uh, we see that so often. And Andre, I don't know if there's a, a way to prepare for that because you go through a regular season as a coach. You're using your, your key guys as that'll be all for Pinedo. And now it's going to be Jeremy Santos to pitch. And Pedro will go probably back to first. There's no real way to prepare for the conference tournament setting either, unless you already have pitchers that have thrown in that spot. Correct. And, and you rely on guys to just do things. And someone always on your team in the conference tournament shows up and does something that you didn't expect them to do. And they surprise you in a good way. Time called. And we will have... Another pitcher coming in. This will be the fourth pitcher of the ninth for Lehman when we return. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access a member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. 
Download the Hometown Fan app today. It's a 10-run inning and still batting at the top of the ninth for CCNY. This was 8-7 Lehman with three outs to go, and they have only recorded one out. Fourth pitcher of the inning is Jeremy Santos. Game one, he was the catcher, eight innings behind the plate. Game two, he's been in right field, and now he has to come in and try to get two outs. He has some pitching experience. Sixth appearance, six in the third innings, eight strikeouts and 11 walks, but opponents only hitting 211 against Jeremy Santos. Yeah, coming coming to the mound from uh, playing first base, um, not really getting much time to warm up, but he is loose because, like you said, he caught the last game, so his arm has been worked on and used. Supron sends that foul, and the book on Santos as a pitcher. Mid-80s fastball. Good arm, of course, for a catcher and a slider that can keep guys off balance. And you've heard this before, when he's down in the zone, he can be very effective. He's down in the zone there, and Supron wasted foul. Actually missed his spot. You can see the catcher setting up for a high pitch. I believe we have a new catcher. And Santos will send that to the backstop, and all three runners will advance. Trotting in to score from third base is Jonathan Rivera. Chazen off to third and de Blasi to second. 18 to 8, CCNY. Ball in two strikes, if this is it for Jeremy Santos. He's an excellent student. He had, he had known a few guys in the Lehman team and decided he wanted a chance to play more rather than be a walk-on or be the third or fourth catcher at Manhattan. But, but those guys are also so important to programs. There's a fine balance where, yeah, you might be the third or fourth catcher, be the bullpen catcher. You need them in college baseball too. And Supran crushes a ball down the right field line. That'll fall and will head to the corner against the new right fielder, Fermin. Two runs will score. Chazanoff is in. So is de Blasi. Supran clears the bases with a two-run double into the corner. And CCNY has hit 20 runs in this game, too. 20 to 8. Yeah, just uh, looks like a foot, starting to look like a football scorer a little bit. Fastball left up. Supron did not miss that one. It is now a season high 20 runs scored by the Beavers in what is lined up to be their final game of the season. And Bazinski takes a strike. They had run ruled Lehman in the second game of the doubleheader that was played at Ohio Field in the Bronx. 18 to two is their previous high. And they have surpassed that here with a 13 run ninth inning. And Bazinski grounds one to short. And Rosa gets the out. And there's two away with Supron taking third base. Now for Lehman, as tough as a pill this is to swallow in the last inning, 
you have to tell yourself this is a championship game. This isn't a regular season game where you can just move on to the next one. There's no clock in baseball. The same way the Beavers were able to put up this many runs, you can go out there and you have to believe that you can do the same thing. It's one of the toughest things in baseball, especially when you're losing by a lot. That one to the backstop. Supron does not bother to advance. Not that I had any role in this game, but at NGIT when I was playing, we played East Stroudsburg University, which is out of uh, the PSAC in Pennsylvania. And we actually scored nine runs in the bottom and ninth inning to win it with two outs. Wow. Yeah. And of course I pitched the next game and uh, my offense, I guess was tired from that <laughs> and uh, got no hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you could only budget runs, right? Yes. Inside and Savino is hit. So he'll take his base. And Rich Serigliano will bat for the second time in the inning. And time is called Elias Fermin is limping in right field. We're going to get a mid-inning defensive change. So Fermin had just went after the double that was hit by Supron in the right field corner and must have hurt himself then. He came in as a, he's been the DH in this game. Remember, he came in when Santos went from right to first. Yeah. And now showing the athletic trainer perhaps something in his, like his left ankle. So Fermin is going to exit. And I guess the pain is enough where he feels he must be replaced. That's yeah, a tough way to uh, exit your last game. He's replaced by Kevin Arias out in right field. So a defensive sub trying to get the final out. And Fermin is not putting a whole lot of weight on that like left ankle. So Arias makes the, the walk out to right. He's a junior from the Bronx, attended the cinema school. Rich Serigliano walked about 20 minutes ago and scored a run. And Santos misses inside. When did you guys start to believe it was possible when you were down? I guess I assume you guys were down eight runs eight against runs. E each Strasbourg. So I would say probably after scoring five runs, we started to uh, believe a little more, especially since it wasn't a situation where we got the first two outs right away. It was more of uh, getting runners on and then getting out and then getting more runners on and then getting it out. So, you know, there, there was a little bit of hope, but we started to believe, I would say, after we scored about four or five runs. Here's Ethan Angris batting for the third time this inning. He is the 19th batter to hit for the Beavers. The most important one was his leadoff walk. And then a two-run single to make it 14 to eight. I do remember our center fielder at the time, Tommy Lemanowitz, yelling at the team once we knocked East Stroudsburg's closer out because he had come in mm. and did not do well either. Almost playable. Look out over there in the CCNY dugout. Pineda, a big man coming at you but it was not catchable. And 
And for Ethan Angris, if this is the final game of his career, he has his sights set to graduate. These guys had to wait patiently after missing basically nearly two full seasons. CUNY did not play in the spring of 2021. Ethan is a fifth-year senior already academically at a Mount Sinai, Suffolk County, Mount Sinai High School. He has an engineering degree, and he is getting set to work for Metro North as an engineer. And I believe his mustache has grown into a full beard in this uh, yep. top half of the yep, night. Yep. Hey, we're going to get confirmation, but unfortunately, this is our graphics man, Mike Canner, will tell us, but we're about an hour into the top of the night. Ground ball to short, not an easy play. Rosa, field, throws, and Pinedo with the scoop. And Angris is retired after batting for the third time. The final totals, 19 men came to the plate for CCNY. They score 13 runs on nine hits. And there was one error. CCNY, three outs away from their first championship since 1994. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. I think even the CCNY dugout is a little stunned what happened. 13 runs in the top of the ninth inning and a season high 20 runs today by the Beavers. They were down to their final three outs and then they just scored 13 times against four different Lehman pitchers. And the new pitcher on here for City College is a senior left-hander out of Carl Place out in Long Island. Here's Richard Vento. Senior academically six foot lefty who's majoring in architecture. He's got a very difficult academic schedule, but a nasty curveball. So he has not appeared in many games, just seven, eight and a third innings thrown. 12.96 ERA. And Vento, a little rusty there as he throws and sails it over Savino, his catcher. Kevin Arias will bat. Uh, no, check that, that is Rosa. Seven, eight, eight, nine here for Lehman. And Vento comes back with a strike. Vento will be graduating and then pursuing a master's in architecture. And a ground ball Supra from foul territory, the throw, and he gets Rosa. One away in the bottom of the ninth. Great job by Supron getting to the ball, setting his feet, and making an accurate throw there. Look at that, using the turf with the bounce. Well done. Well done, young man. He's done a great job defensively, except for one mistake all day long in both games. Now, third base is a hard position against Illumina Bats, Andre. Yes. 
Justin Nunez takes a called strike from Richard Vento. After the program was dropped and dormant for about an eight year period after winning the championship in 1994, a City College baseball and basketball alumnus, real estate baron, and also later became a professor. Bob Adler gets a lot of credit. He helped bring CCNY baseball back and in that first year was even a volunteer baseball assistant coach. That was critical. Two two inside three and two. Usually when you lose a program, it's hard to get it back. You need resources, funding, the people that want to support it returning again, even at the division three level. Obviously, not every CUNY has baseball. And notably places like Brooklyn College that used to have it, York don't. And the CUNY is down to just four. You need six for an automatic bid. Hopefully we can see them sometime again in the future. Yeah, it's nice to see some of these programs coming back throughout the country. And ground ball foul. And with all the restrictions New York City placed upon them, the community colleges had four programs. Again, perhaps someday in the future, programs like LaGuardia Community College, can return. Queensboro missed last year, came back this year. 3 2 by Vento, low and away, ball four, and he walks Justin Nunez. But now the conference certainly wide open with no more Stevens and definitely no more Staten Island yes. in the recruiting hotbed of especially D2, D3 baseball that Staten Island is. Yes. Here's Glenn Jarin. Yeah, we get to see one of my favorite players of the day getting that bat in the ninth inning here. Ground ball, the short might be two. Cregan, the second one, Bozitski on to first, and CCNY has a championship. The Beavers celebrate the program's second title and first since 1994. A huge ninth inning carries them to a 20 to eight win over Lehman. They sweep the doubleheader and capture the championship two games to none. This all started with John Stone in game one, just setting the tone, being the ace, carrying it over into game two, back and forth game. I mean, it was very exciting up until the top of the ninth there. Hats off to Lehman for fighting all year long. Like I said, they were picked fourth to finish last in this conference and making it to the championship game. Championship presentation coming up. CCNY has a trophy to bring back with them up to Amsterdam Avenue. 20 to 8 the final on Facebook Live. 2022-23 CUNY Athletic Conference Championships are presented by Health First. Health insurance for New Yorkers, the official wellness sponsor of CUNY Athletics. The Hospital for Special Surgery, number one in the U.S. for orthopedics, is proud to be the official hospital of the CUNY Athletic Conference. CUNY University Student Senate, providing our students the platform to shape the City University of New York. And Hometown Ticketing, the official ticketing provider of the CUNY Athletic Conference. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today.
How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Twenty twenty two twenty three CUNY Athletic Conference Championships are presented by Health First, health insurance for New Yorkers, the official wellness sponsor of CUNY Athletics. The Hospital for Special Surgery, number one in the U.S. for orthopedics, is proud to be the official hospital of the CUNY Athletic Conference. CUNY University Student Senate, providing our students the platform to shape the City University of New York. And Hometown Ticketing, the official ticketing provider of the CUNY Athletic Conference. Number four, a ninth inning that lasted an estimated 55 minutes is the difference in this game two. After a 10-0 finish for CCNY in game one, they were on the verge of being forced to play a winner-take-all game three tomorrow, and instead they come up with 13 runs on nine hits, sending 19 batters to the plate in a stunning turn of events here. Ralph Norchik with Alliance University head coach Andre Narvaez as the Lehman team is now getting their runner-up medals here. Lehman knocking out the two-seed Baruch 7-4 to four on Monday. That was... Of course, very notable, and they split a double header against Baruch in the final regular season games. So certainly for this Lehman team, a step forward for Coach James Sisko, but there's a lot of notable guys coming back, and also some notable fifth, sixth, seventh yeah. year seniors, fourth year seniors also walking out the door. Yeah. And we'll see Lehman down the road and how they can get themselves back here and and try to pursue their first title since 95. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they didn't have the depth for pitching. Um, and I think, you know, I, there's a lot of offense here, but from what I saw, it was about the fact that the Beavers had the pitching that they needed at the right time, and Lehman just didn't have that extra pitcher to go to or didn't have Hennessy last a little longer before going to Delgado, um, you know, and, and I think that's what hurt him. That was the big difference. And in a conference championship, you start off in the CUNY with a doubleheader. It certainly makes a big difference rather than playing it. Division one series, right? You might do Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Absolutely changes everything. Uh, certainly the, uh, the the pieces on the chessboard are a lot different. But Lehman falls today in the doubleheader. They end up going five and nine against CUNY competition. They end the season with a record of seven and twenty-three, as the three seed and the ninth year comes to an end. 
for head coach James Cisco, and he's going to continue to go out and recruit and understand. Uh, look, everybody knows you need pitching depth, but uh, his guys saw what it takes, and they were so close to coming out with a game two win, and then you just never know because it's all hands on deck. Uh, both teams would have been in precarious positions from a pitching standpoint where tomorrow's game could have been a wild one. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, tomorrow we might have uh, seen Torres starting instead of coming in in the ninth, yeah. and, and they would have had to rely on him to give them some innings. Yeah, the tomorrow could have been a 10-9 uh, type of a game because of that pitching situation. Those games can go either way. And that's how close Lehman came to forcing that situation despite this final score of 20 to eight. Now the medals in the championship presentation to City College. They finished the year 16 and 18 overall. They played a very hard schedule in the early season. Stevens Tech doubleheader, Mount St. Vincent good program from the skyline. Doubleheader sweep at the hands of Maritime. So they started off the season struggling and trying to figure out their lineup. They started off the season 0 and 8. So that against non-conference competitions, that's 16 and 18 can be a little bit deceiving from the bigger picture. And City College ends the season having won nine in a row. The captains, many of them finishing up. J.D. Johnstone holding it 44 there in purple. Eight scoreless innings in game one. Absolutely set the tone to allow CCNY to have enough arms left to take the baton into this game number two. Once again, congratulations to the City College Beavers. Champions for the second time in program history and the first since 1994. The Beavers, they'll have a trophy to take back with them on the long, pleasant ride, regardless of the traffic, on this Friday night from Brooklyn. Final totals, 20 runs, a season high, 20 hits and two errors for CCNY. Eight runs, eight hits, and three errors for Lehman. Ten nothing and twenty to eight was the final. Certainly was a roller coaster of a ninth inning that the Beavers landed comfortably on. For our entire great crew for this very long Friday, our producer Mike Morse, our director Dan Lippenholtz, executive producer Mark Fratto, and the entire CUNY Athletic Conference, and for my partner Andre Narvaez, thank you, a real pleasure. Thank you. My name is Ralph Binorching, saying so long and have a great night. Once again, your champions in the CUNY Athletic Conference, the CCNY Beavers tonight in Brooklyn. Good night from Facebook Live.